Hawkeye, your sports leader in South Central Utah, now presents Snow College Badger Sports on the radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by sports-minded sponsors throughout South Central Utah. And now let's get started with live sports play-by-play -play action on KMTI Radio. And a good afternoon and welcome to Robert L. Stoddard Field and Terry Foote Stadium. Gary Chedester and Greg Sterner with you as the Snow College Badgers host Garden City, Kansas on a beautiful afternoon for football. Hopefully uh, uh, sometime during this, uh, Joe, if you can have the camera guy put it up on the, the mountain. We've got the, the leaves changing up on the mountain. It's a beautiful time of year and a great day for football, Greg. Not only that, homecoming day here. I was about to say homecoming night. Homecoming day here in Ephraim. We got the the food trucks out here, the smell coming in. But if you can't be here, we're, you're, we're glad you're joining us, at least watching the game, listening to the game. And uh, very fortunate to, to have a game for these two teams. Uh, just to let you know how this uh, kind of came about, uh, Snow College had, had scheduled ASA Miami, and ASA Miami didn't send the contract in, avoided phone calls, and we were wondering what was going to happen. Uh, finally, some people uh, in athletics got on the uh, schedule and started looking to see what other teams had an open bye week that week. And it turns out Garden City had a team cancel on them as well. We got together and uh, they said, yeah, we'll come out and play you. And that's how we have this matchup today between Garden City at 3-3 three and three and Snow College Badgers at 4-2. and two. Uh, These two teams have only met one other time. But the coaches have, have met several times. At least the coach, uh, Coach Tom Minnick, coached at Arizona Western for several years. So very familiar with Snow College and, and Ephraim, Utah. Yeah, he knows Ephraim. And if you would have told me before, you know, early in the season that they would have had to scramble to find a team to come out to Ephraim and play, I, I would have thought it would, it would have been one of those, maybe one of those prep schools where it's 85 nothing. We We've, we've called some of those games, you know, Gary, we right. see those. Uh, to get Garden City, who's a, a, a great program, some uh, notable alumni for this school in the Kansas League, uh, to get them to come out on such short notice is is a testament to Rob Nielsen, Zach Erickson, whoever arranged that for for the Badgers. Uh, it's it's a good opponent that's coming out here, and uh, it's a fun one that I'm I'm excited to see. All right, Garden City, Kansas started the season 0 and 3, have won three in a row now. They're definitely trending up. And uh, they, they play in that tough Kansas League. They've uh, got to face, they still need to face. Um, <laughs> oh. Is it Butler? Well, they, I think they still have to play Butler, but they also have to play Hutchinson. Oh, Hutchinson. I, I was having a hard time <laughs> thinking I think, of I think that's a, a, a rematch of their championship game last year in the Kansas League was Hutch and, and, and Garden, Garden City, City last year. Yeah, so big rivalry there for sure. Hutch is uh, now ranked number one in the nation. Iowa Western has moved up to number two. Uh, you've got three teams from the Mississippi Conference that are in the top ten. Uh, the Badgers have uh, dropped, obviously, from that last win. But if you look at strength of schedule, I, I don't know that anybody's playing a tougher schedule than Snow College. I mean, Snow's only two yeah. losses have come to the number one team in the nation and the number three team in the nation. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and both of those on the road. Yeah, and, it, and that's, that's a testament to the voters keeping Snow in the top ten at number nine, even with those, those two losses. And uh, Garden City not ranked right now, just receiving votes, if I remember right, Gary. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, but they, you know, if they can come in here and upset the Badgers, they would definitely be ranked after today. I, I agree with that. So uh, a good afternoon for football. We thank you for joining us here on the Snow College pregame show. Gary Chedester and uh, Greg Sterner with you. We'll be back with more on the Snow College uh, pregame show. And as we continue with the uh, interview with Zach Erickson, we'll be back with that right after this. Centricom believes the service relationship continues long after installation, and we're available to support you every step of the way. That's why if there is a problem with our equipment, a service visit from us means no cost to you. We know the value of a satisfied customer, so if you refer us to a friend, we'll take care of them and you'll get one month of service free. We promise to make your experience the best it can be. Centricom, keeping you connected. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. They named it Cache because it was there they would store their goods and come together to trade and connect. The spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. They are Central Utah's financial outfitter. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. Cache Valley and Central Utah are rooted in grand expeditions. Let's keep that heritage alive together. Discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. 
The Snow College Campus Store has something for every member of the family to show their Badger pride. They have hoodies, mugs, car stickers, and more. Online students and parents can get in on the fun too, because now the campus store is online at store.snow.edu. Go there now for all of your Snow College apparel needs. Visit store.snow.edu. That's store.snow.edu. D.O. Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of pre-engineered metal buildings of all sizes. Plus, they are your headquarters for custom metal roof and wall panels for your home or business, including all trim and accessories. All of their roof and wall panels are available in several gauges in over 20 different colors. For a free cost estimate or more information, contact C.O. Building Systems in Ephraim, 800-262-5347. That's 800-262-5347. Online at cobuildings.com. I'm Dr. Jason Standring, Central Valley Medical Center. I wanted to become a doctor because as I grew up, my family had a family doc that delivered my siblings and took care of us when we were sick and if we had to go to the hospital, and I wanted to do the same thing. Family medicine allows me to do that. I love the fact that I can take care of families throughout their lifespan, from birth and throughout their growing years and their families, even until the end of life care. I'm Dr. Jason Standring at Central Valley Medical Center, and we're accepting new patients, and I'm eager to get to know you and your family. Welcome back to the Snow College pregame show with head coach Zach Erickson. And uh, coach, we talked on the postgame last week, and we've talked a little bit here before we've started, but do you feel like this season is just, I, I mean, you've had a little bit of everything happen, and, and it also coincides with the toughest schedule that you've ever created as head coach of Snow College. Yeah, it, you know, it does, when you look at that, it does feel a lot like that, you know, kind of, you know, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Um, and, but the thing is, is we know that, and so you got to prepare for that. And so, uh, you know, we as a coaching staff are, are trying our best to, to really make sure that we're not leaving any stone unturned to try to figure out, you know, what happened last week and, and how we can make sure that something like that doesn't happen again. Um, and, our, and our players are doing the same thing. You know, they, they've had a great week and, and have looked kind of at themselves in the mirror and tried to say, okay, what, what can we do as well to make sure that that doesn't happen? And so... Uh, you know, we just, you know, I think, I think in these kind of times is, you know, we can either choose to kind of fold it up and roll shop or this is where we can really grow and kind of see what we're made of. And so uh, hopefully it's the latter. Um, I've liked what I've seen this week uh, out of the guys and out of the staff. And, and we've, you know, I wouldn't say we've blown up kind of the process, but we've taken a real good, long, hard look at the process to make sure what we're doing is, is the right thing to be doing. Um, and so I really feel good about what we've done this weekend now, you know, we got to get to Saturday and, you know, with it being homecoming and you kind of worry about all those other distractions and all the things that go along with that. And so hopefully, uh, we can continue to encourage our guys, Hey, your job for homecoming is to win a football game and to prepare to win a football game. And so got to get to the point where we can put last Saturday behind us and, and look forward. And again, like you said, our toughest schedule we've ever had here at Snow College. And we have another tough one, uh, in Garden City is there very, athletically gifted team and so we got to make sure we're on our p's and q's and make sure we're ready to go okay coach just one question uh and and we'll put last week behind us what what stands out at you you i mean we talked in the post game show and and but now you've had time to look at some film and and kind of analyze what's what's the biggest thing that stands out at you um we were we were very poor in our technique technically we were very we were not very good um, and when when you meet teams that are physically as gifted and as capable as you are, technique will always win out. And and they were much better, speaking their defense versus our offense, they were much better technically than we were. Um, and so uh, it's been a big focus this week to, to focus on our technical side of our game um, because we were, when you watch the tape, it's frustrating because you're, you are a, a half a man away from breaking a 40-yard run or you're, you know, a, a step, a ball, a step in front because of a bad second step in a drop from completing a 60-yard pass, like things like that that um, were right there for us that because we weren't good in our technique, um, we, we weren't able to, to finish those things off. And so sometimes that happens when players start to, 
to reach. They start to feel behind the eight ball. They start trying to do more than what they are coached to do on every particular play. And so, again, we just kind of remind our guys, you have to do your 111th, right? Everybody has one job to do. And as everybody does their 111th, now we become a collective whole and we can be successful. And so you have to do the right technique. You have to have your effort has to be there. All of those type of things that uh, weren't exactly there and firing on all cylinders for us on Saturday. So uh, it was a big emphasis this week on, on the technical side of what we're doing. Um, and then to make sure that our guys understand that it's just a 111. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to do too little. Um, and that's where we can really be successful. All right, Coach, that's behind us. We'll take a break. When we come back on the Snow College pregame show, we'll talk about Garden City right after this. Little Caesars of Ephraim and Nephi have expanded to a third location in Gunnison, inside Gunnison Sinclair. Hours Monday to Saturday, 1030 a.m. to 9 p.m. Come enjoy classics like crazy bread, cheese, pepperoni, and three meat treat pizzas. Little Caesars also offers wings, dip, soda, and an awesome family meal deal, including two liters of soda, pepperoni, or cheese pizza, and a crazy combo for just $9.99. Come enjoy one of the best deals in America. Little Caesars, Ephraim, Nephi, and Gunnison. Why do people everywhere love my style checking? It has rewards you'll flip for. I love my travel rebates! With my style, the spotlight's always on me. We can send money with Zell. Good boy. For me, it's instant issue debit card. Find out why people everywhere love my style checking from Mountain America at macu.com. Are you looking for a TV experience that you'll love? Then listen up. Mantitel has partnered with Philo to bring you over 50 channels of live and on-demand TV. Stream your favorite shows from networks like Hallmark, Discovery, Nickelodeon, and more. The best part is Philo gives you over 50 channels with unlimited recording on all of your devices, so you can watch what you want, when you want, for only $20 a month. To sign up, go to go.philo.com slash mtcc. That's go.philo dot com slash mtcc. Mantitel, connecting your life since 1907. Welcome back to the Snow College pregame show. For more information, visit snow.edu. Uh, Coach, Garden City this week. Um, I can't remember the last time we played Garden City. Um, but 2019. they're 2019. Oh, My okay. First year Your first year. Okay. And I wasn't involved uh, 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 that much with it at that point. So, okay. And was the Arizona guy, the coach from Arizona Western, the coach there then? He was. That was his probably first year or second. Okay, all right. So they know us. You, we know them now. After watching some video and so forth, what uh, what do we know? Athletic. These guys are are they're big. They're athletic. They're fast. They're strong. Um, they they have a slightly different recruiting philosophy than than we do, um, and they really like to go out and get those Division One bounce back guys and bring them in for a year and then try to get them out. Uh, and so a lot of these guys have been at Division One programs on both sides of the ball, and they come in and they uh, they are very talented. Um, they are, they they're three and three. They they started zero and three and have won their last three. Um, and so maybe that's starting to come together. Uh, there are some holes um, that they they don't necessarily uh, play very disciplined. They they there are guys that because they're so athletic rely on their athleticism as opposed to uh, being in the right gaps or taking the right steps or, or whatever the case might be. And so um, if we can take advantage of that, uh, I think I think we'll be okay. Um, but they they with the athleticism that they have and the fact that we know how well coached they are, whether or not they do it or not, you know, right. Minnick and Felker and those guys that are there uh, at Garden City are, are phenomenal coaches. And so they will have a great plan. And now it's just you know a matter of whether those guys will go out and execute that plan. And so we've got to make sure that we're ready for everything. Um, they they really have nothing to lose, and so they're going to be, you know, pulling out all the stops, and uh, we've got to be prepared for that. Um, and so we've kind of thrown some stuff at our guys to kind of make sure they're ready for pretty much anything that could come in what they do, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. And so uh, we. We just have to, like I said, kind of in the last segment, we have to be assignment sound and technically sound, um, and, and we should match up pretty good. And this should be a really great homecoming game for us and uh, just another one of those games that we were able to add late in our schedule because of cancellation. 
uh, that strengthens our schedule. And so, um, again, we tell our guys, you you want to play these games. We could have gone out and scheduled a cupcake, but that doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do us any good. Um, and so we were able to get Garden City here, and, and we're excited to get out on the field uh, this afternoon and see how it goes. One of the things that you touched on in the first segment was uh, the the week and, and how everybody's reacting. And, and that that's really a big factor because there are such high expectations with snow. I, I think it would be easy after two losses to think, well, what have we got to play for? But but these guys want to go on to Division One, and that's that's really the key. Yeah, um, that is where we started this week. And then as kind of the week progressed, and we actually kind of looked at what has happened in the landscape last week and the week before. Yeah, uh, there's, there's an outside chance that we uh, – personally, I think a two-loss team may find themselves – at number four, um, because you see what happens with Mississippi. They're only going to send one uh, because whoever wins their conference championship is the only one they will send. Uh, and they have two. And they have two. They have their three and four right now uh, with Northwest and with Jones um, at four. And so, uh, you know, that, that's, that's neither here nor there. But I, I think uh, that a two-loss team has a shot. Uh, and I think if we can do what we need to do this Saturday, then, again, it keeps – it continues to give us an outside chance to be able to get in. And so, number one, we started with guys, look, hey, your, your product, your brand is what you put on tape. It doesn't matter what your record is. And so if you want to continue to get recruited and have an opportunity to go play elsewhere, the record doesn't matter, right? The record doesn't matter. And so uh, we, we've had some, what I feel is some good response. I, I would be lying if everyone, if I told you everyone has responded the way we wish they would have. Um, and, and I think that may be reflective in who you see playing on Saturday. Um, but uh, we, we've found a fairly good response um, to kind of what we've been selling this week and to say, hey, number one, you have to continue to put quality film together. Number two, we have an outside chance if we can win out to continue to, to maybe put ourselves in a position to get into that four spot. And so, um, like I said, we, I, We've had a good week of practice. It's been everything I would really want it to be after what has happened. And so uh, the good thing is, is the guys are chomping at the bit to get to this next game. That's, you know, I think there's such a bad taste in everybody's mouth that uh, from what happened, especially on the offensive side of the ball, that, that they're kind of chomping at the bit to get back out there and prove that that's, that's not who we are and, and that we're better than that. And so, uh, you know, one o'clock can't come soon enough. So. All right, Coach. We'll take another break and uh, come back with more on the Snow College pregame show right after this. This is Nate Johnson of Risk Managers Insurance Agency in Ephraim. It is surprising how many people do not have any life insurance or adequate coverage today. If you were to suddenly die, would your family have enough money for your funeral and to pay off any debt you may have, or funds to live on with your income no longer available to care for your family? You may be surprised at how low life insurance rates are. Let me sit down with you and discuss how life insurance can benefit you and your family. Call us at Risk Managers in Ephraim, 283-4685. San Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and has grown to be one of the major steel fabricator and erectors in the Intermountain West. The management and staff recognizes the dedication and hard work of the Snow College athletic teams and hopes their support assists the athletic programs in continuing their traditions of excellence. San Pete Steel and Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time. Honored to sponsor the Snow Badger Steel Man play of the game. Do you want to make a difference in life? Do you want a college that values you right now? At Snow College, I had opportunities to be hands-on and really make a difference as a freshman in clubs, classes, sports, and student government. At Snow College, I didn't get pushed to the back while I watched the upperclassmen do everything. I was involved right away. Snow College is accepting your application right now. To get more information or schedule a campus visit, go to snow.edu. That's snow.edu. At Snow College, it is all about you. Welcome back to the Snow College pregame show with head coach Zach Erickson. And uh, coach, what what is it that is the the biggest thing that Garden City does that that you are concerned about? Uh, their I think their big playability on offense is is gives you pause for concern. They when you when you watch the tape, 
they don't tend to, to grind you down and like have 14, 15 play drives. They put points on the board, two, three plays, and it's and it comes from everywhere. They can throw the ball over your head. They have really athletic backs, um, and so you really try to just limit their explosive plays um, and try to get them into those drawn out series where you know now maybe it's going to be a little more difficult for them to not be able to to get the ball in the end zone with some of their uh, explosive plays, and so. Um, that, that's going to be a big emphasis uh, to limit the explosive plays and, and to make sure that we we make them earn everything that they get and that they don't get any of those cheap explosive plays. And so uh, that's kind of one thing that we're ha- had a big emphasis on this week. And and doing that not only on the defensive side but also in, in special teams, making sure that they don't have a game changing explosive play in special teams. And and then we just got to be able to pick up that they do a lot of different stuff on the back end on defense their coverages. Um, this is this team does more on the back end than anybody we've seen um, all season. They'll they'll base out of cover four. They'll play two man. Uh, they'll roll to cover three versus trips. And then every so often they get into this cover one robber thing where all of a sudden you have a free safety rolling down to the middle of the field that pre snap wasn't there. And so uh, we just got to make sure that we our quarterbacks can identify what they're doing on the back end and and if we can. Yeah, we should be good. And if we can't, that's a scary thought. <laughs> okay. We talked in the postgame last week. The defense played outstanding last week. Um, and and you were a little shorthanded again. I, I mean, you had some players that did travel but uh, didn't didn't play. So um, where are we at there with, with injuries? And, and you mentioned, you know, some changes in starters. So maybe if you could just touch on, on that both offensively and defensively. Um, well, defensively uh, – We'll look a lot the same um, as we did last week. Uh, no starters really uh, very different. Um, we got some position changes. We're gonna we're gonna bump Cole Bowers um, just over a spot. He, he's been playing Mike. We're gonna move him to Bo, uh, which is just another spot, the other inside linebacker spot. Um, and then uh, I think you'll see uh, Keeney Vunipola play a lot in the Mike spot uh, this week at linebacker. Um, and then, and then everything should pretty much be the same, um, as you've seen defensively, um, offensively, uh, still trying to find that right group of receivers, um, to kind of get out there and make some plays for us. Uh, we're still trying to get Targi back from, from the turf toe injury. And so he's kind of working his way back. Um, and he's kind of going to be a game time decision as to whether or not he's the guy, uh, you know, at kickoff. Um, and then if not, you'll, you'll still see Carson and Rasul kind of getting their way back into it. Um, you'll see uh, Romeo back at left guard. Um, didn't really play last week with the banged up elbow, but he, he should be back and healthy. Um, and then, uh, you know, Cash, uh, we've had some stuff kind of go on where, you know, at quarterback Cash will be the guy probably here from here on out the rest of the season and, and hope he can stay healthy. Uh, and we're going to, like I said, kind of build it around him and try to put him in his, a position to be as successful as he can be. Uh, and and hope to continue to build that continuity with him and the receivers and uh, hopefully be able to put some points up on the board because seeing that goose egg after last week is never fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a long time since we've had that, but I, I know you're going to be ready for that this week. All right, thanks, Coach, uh, and we'll uh, have you join us on the postgame show after a Badger win. Sounds good. Looking forward to that win and talking to you after that. So. All right, thanks, Coach. We'll be back with more on the pregame show right after this. I'm a mom raising four kids, so I know what you're dealing with. Distractions during homework time, faces buried in devices at dinner, not to mention the tug of war to pry devices away from my kids when it's time to go to bed. So I looked everywhere to find a system that could help me with everything I need, a system I can trust. And I found it. It's called CentraGuard by Centricom. You can get started with taking back the internet by visiting centricom.com right now. CentraGuard, better family internet. Welcome back to the Snow College and welcome back. Show with him. And welcome back. The Snow College Badgers uh, kick it off a very high kick that looked like it was going to go into the end zone, Greg. I thought it was going in the end zone. Hits at the one and takes a Badger bounce. Yeah. And Garden City has to feel that they're lucky, I think, to get out to the 18-yard line. The Garden City returner thought bolt like we did. He just waved his hands and was running back to the sideline and realized it bounced at the one. Pitching wedge came back towards about the three-yard line, and he had to pick it up and only 
gets out to what, about the 17 or so yard line, 18 yard line. Yeah, that, that wasn't even a pitching wedge. That was a lob wedge. That was a 60-degree <laughs> lob wedge with a lot of backspin. <laughs> That's illegal on the PGA Tour, so much, so much loft. <laughs> All right, so Garden City will have the ball first and 10 from their own 18-yard line, pump fake. Quarterback still has it, tries to find a hole, and comes up the middle. Not much there, and the Badgers able to take him down after a gain of one. It'll be out to the 19-yard line, second and one. Trying to get the number on that quarterback. I think it's four out there. Is that right? Yeah, Ty Perry is yes. the quarterback. But those, so 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 for those of you on the radio, we've got the Bronc Busters out here from Garden City. Yellow on yellow on yellow. And it's hard to see those <laughs> white numbers out here. Sometimes it's easier to see them on the video, so maybe we'll have to look at the video. All right, so it's going to be second down and nine for the Bronc Busters, and somebody moved on the offensive line. Actually, I think it's number 15, Jalen Young. No? They, 16? Gabe Friend? For the Bronc yeah, Busters, and somebody moved on the out. offensive line. Yeah, I Actually, I think it's number 15, Jalen Young. Gary, look at this. Oh, man, I have never seen that. Yeah, they're, you're right. Uh, unless you're unless right. the one that was just in there was just in for a special formation, and number four out here, Perry, is the, is the main quarterback, but... So Ty Perry back in. It was Gabe Friend that was out there on that last uh, play that was actually illegal procedure, so it moves it back. It's second and 14. Perry, quick pass out in the flats, a wide receiver screen, and able to pick up good yardage out across the 20 to about the 24-yard line on the reception. Watch, watch this replay here. Great blocking downfield by the receiver. D. Cleeter pancake block out there. I wish I could get a number. Just can't see it out there, unfortunately, but... So that's going to bring up a third down on the first possession here for the Bronc Busters. Again, Ty Perry, the quarterback, shotgun formation, looks to the left, has time, and throws incomplete. It would have been short of the first down even had he uh, completed that. So it's going to bring up a three and out, a punting situation. And how big is that illegal procedure call that put him behind the sticks? Yeah, 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 that always hurts when you when you start off behind the sticks, but... Good three and out by the Badger defense. Needed that. You know, last week we mentioned just talking back and forth in the pregame. Defense played well in that loss to uh, to uh, Iowa Western. Gave up those 26 points. Defense only gave up, I think you said, 19, really. Yeah. Uh, because of a pick six. But uh, good, for, good for the Badgers to get a three and out. Good kick. Takes a great bounce. Mm -hmm. Dawson Tanner doesn't pick it up. Let's it continue to bounce. And it's going to go all the way down to the 25-yard line. And... Easy for us to second guess, but a lot of times you like to see that player pick it. If it's a good bounce, take it on the bounce, or like you just signaled to me, fair catch. Yeah, step up and fair catch that. That, that was about 15, 15, 20 yards on the uh, bounce there. So the Badgers come out with their first possession, and we didn't talk about it a lot on the pregame. The Badgers have had their challenges at quarterback, but I like Deshaun Cash, what he brings to the table for Snow College. Very athletic. Um, good arm. Can run as well. Can run, yep. And Targi Lamson, Carson Manukin in the backfield. Hand off to Manukin, and Manukin is going to be swallowed up. He does not get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Garden City defense very fired up. Yeah, Badgers have done a better job this year running than passing. They average more yards per game rushing, almost 200 on the year than passing, which is closer to about the 170 or so range. Under Zach Erickson, Snow. 10 and 1 with a 100 yard rusher. So you know that's a, an emphasis for Coach Erickson. Second down and 11. Again, shotgun formation. Targi Lamson. Nope, Carson Manukin. He steps to the left and comes back to the right, lowers the shoulder. He's going to get about eight, nine yards. He's going to be short of the first down, but it's going to be very manageable here. Third and let's call it two. Yeah, I don't know if that was supposed to counter and come the other way. It looks like Carson started left planted that foot, saw there was nothing there, and came back to the right and was able to get a really good gain there, make, up, made it, make it third and manageable. Again, Manukin in the backfield with Deshaun Cash. Tarkey Lamson out. The Badgers go with three wide outs to the left. Cash back to pass. He's got the crossing route, goes over the mm. middle, and it's going to be picked off. Just over through his intended receiver, and the Badgers throw a pick. On their very first possession, that's what happened last week against Iowa Western that gave good position to Iowa Western. Yeah, just went a little bit too high on that one. Good good tackle there by the intended receiver for the Badgers. Otherwise, that one might have been going at least a few more yards, maybe even into the end zone. So 
Uh, at least good to limit the damage there, but still great field position for the Bronc Busters to start. They start at the Badger 39-yard line with their second possession. Ty Perry with a running back to his left, three wide outs to the right. He keeps it himself, and John Talmoa Payow says, welcome to Ephraim. Wow. And just drills Perry right at the 40-yard line. Wow, what a hit by Telmo Apeo. Drove him back a couple of yards there as he's hitting him. Just eats it, swallows him up. And only a one-yard loss. I'll give him that little bit of a forward progress, but still a great play by John T Telmo Apeo. I think if I'm well, out I'm signaling to the coaches, let's, let's don't run that one again for a while. <laughs> I'm going to hand that ball off. If it's a run pass option, I'm going to hand it to my running back. Here's the pitch. Deep in the backfield, trying to find yardage. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about all. Back to the 40-yard line. Hand it to my running back. Good Here's defense the there by the Badgers on the carry. Is it uh, Hodges? Yeah, it looks like Xavier DeLong for the Badgers back to coming the up from the line safety of scrimmage position. And that making a hit there right at the line of scrimmage. Good job by Xavier to step up and get that hit. Both of these defenses playing uh, pretty amped up, both of them. So Hodges, no gain on the play. It's going to bring up third and 11. Substitution, uh, big number 72, J Jabari uh, Dawkins goes out. And now the slot man moving around. Three wideouts to the left for Garden City. Badgers come on a blitz, passes to the uh, slot man, and nothing there. Boy, three Badgers coming up and converging on the receiver. And he limps off. Yeah, yeah it looked like maybe, maybe an ankle or lower leg for the Garden City receiver, but he's able to get to the sideline just trying to work that out. But yeah, great defense there by the Badgers. You give up that little flat route, but you know you have the speed to chase down the receiver. Only about a two yard gain, fourth and nine now. So punting formation once again. Back deep to receive is Dawson Tanner, I think. Looks like Dawson back there again. He'll stand at his own 10 yard line. Good snap, plenty of time. Kick is away, a low kick, fair catch signaled for, and it carries into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. The Badgers will start at their own 20-yard line. So two possessions for the uh, Bronc Busters and two punts, two, three, and out. The Badgers come out on the field for their second possession and hopefully be able to put something together here. Yeah, Badgers have to feel pretty good about that stop there. You give up a, an interception in your own territory and then are, are able to just... Turn the team into a three and out. Not even, not even four down territory. Not even let them get five, six yards to where they think about going for it. Again, Carson Manukin in the backfield. Badgers line up. Well, I thought he was going to go into more of a pistol formation, but shotgun and Carson Manukin to his right. Two wide outs, one left, one right. Hand off to Manukin. Manukin hit in the backfield as soon as he got the ball. First man in there once again is Raymond uh, Cutts. Redshirt sophomore, 6'3", 260-pound defensive lineman from Orlando, Florida. Yeah. They're just stacking the box, Garden City. They're not worried about Snow passing on him. So we'll see if Snow's able to maybe sneak somebody out of the backfield, one of the slot position, or even a tight end, and, and catch, catch him on a blitz because they are sending everybody. Badgers go with Elijah Irvin split wide to the left. Taylor Larson in the slot to the right. Back to pass. And mm -hmm. another pickoff. The Badgers have thrown two passes. Both of them picked off. This one might go into the end zone. Nope, hustling over and making the play inside the 10-yard line. But two interceptions, back-to-back -back plays for Snow College. Deshaun Cash has thrown two picks. I think the intended receiver that time was that six, Elijah Irvin out, I think so. out on this side. And Irvin thought he was interfered with. He was kind of upset. He thought he was held before that pass was even in the air. I don't know if we're going to see it here, but you saw him turn and look to the official like, I couldn't get to my spot. Uh, but, you know, that's just something you have to fight through, I guess, and Badger defense is going to have to step up again here from the five. Backs to the wall here, the defense. Garden City trying to punch it in. Handoff gets inside the five to about the two-yard line. Well, now they're going to mark it at the three. Not sure who carried that. That looks like Travis, Travis Dixon. Thank you. Bronc Busters, number 17. So it'll bring up second and goal from the three-yard line. Badger shift and somebody move for Garden City. Yeah, it looked like that left tackle just got going just a little bit too soon there. Kind of tried to tried to hide it, but it was <laughs> it was pretty obvious. We could even see it up here. 
The Badger defense really tries to do that. Uh, it, when they're playing teams that do zone blocking, they try to move just a little bit before that snap and try to confuse who's going to be blocking where. And sometimes the offense does move with that. No, oh, that's so tough. I watch that a lot. Just you know, not having never played on the line, offensive or defensive, uh, playing football. Just when I watch it on TV or you watch it live, I don't know how the offensive linemen just hold their hold their hold still a lot of the time. Yeah. Second down and goal from the eight. The Badgers again move, but Garden City does not. Handoff gets back near the five-yard line. Was that uh, Travis Dixon again? Yeah. So we're, we're about halfway through this first quarter, and I'll tell you who the, who's winning this game, and that's both of the defensive lines. Both of these defensive <laughs> yeah. lines are just dominating their counterparts across from them. And we'll see which, which offensive line maybe can make a play, step up and uh, knock that defensive line back a little bit. So third and goal here. Dixon lines up to the right of Perry. Perry back to pass, looks into the end zone, throws, got a man open. And that's going to be a touchdown, but there is a you're flag a on hold. the play. Yeah, you're going to be a hold. I don't know if we'll see this replay here. If we do, right in the middle, right? I think it's that right guard. He just reaches out because the Badger was the Badger defender was coming through clean. And if he wouldn't have held him, there probably wouldn't have been a sack there. Even how quickly it was, the pass got away. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure going to be a hold here. So they're talking things over. The referees are trying to see who who was. It is holding. You called it, Greg. Trying to see who was coming off here. One of the Badger defenders was hurt, and I don't know. Uh, you didn't see a number. Is it Cole? I'm, I'm worried it's Cole Bauer. Yeah, Cole Bauer's coming off. He's really favoring that leg, and that's somebody. Oh. If you're a Badger fan, you don't want to lose. Oh no, the Badgers are already very thin at linebacker. They've had to move a couple of. Uh, people into that linebacker position and Bowers still being looked at Bowers was limping after the game last week and I told him quit limping <laughs> you're okay yeah. so big third down here still third and goal got mm. a man wide open nobody covering Dixon out of the backfield Dixon into the end zone touchdown and here's where that hurts Bowers off the field and and the Badgers don't get somebody over I'm trying to see if that's number six or number zero number zero is a is a D lineman, lineman yeah yeah, I, I can't. I'm trying to get that number. Maybe number eight, Davion Hodges, that was coming out of the backfield that time. But uh, good, just a good play design that time. Wide open on the right side. Just lob it up to him, let him step into the end zone untouched. Extra point is up, and the extra point is good, and it's on top of the roof of the Bergeson Activity Center. We'll take the timeout. Badgers trail it 7 to nothing to the Garden City Bronkbusters. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Terry Foot Stadium, and as the kick goes through the back of the end zone, and the Badgers will start their third possession on their own 25-yard line. And uh, Greg, already turnovers a, a big factor. Uh, the Badgers had a lot of turnovers last week. They ended up uh, yeah. with uh, what three, four, four interceptions. One of them was a pick six. They had a fumble. They turned it over on downs. They had a blocked field goal. Uh, actually, they had five interceptions. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five interceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you, you've just got to clean it up, and and you'll see if these if these bronc busters in yellow here, if they just pack the box, just saying we're going to stop Targi Lampson, Fison, uh, you know, we're going to stop Carson Manukin and make Deshaun Cash beat us, and we'll see we'll see if Deshaun's up for it. Hand off to Manukin. Manukin tries to wait for a hole, and no hole ever appears, and he's going to lose yardage back to the 23-yard line, a loss of two. 
And I hate to say it already, but it looks an awful lot like what was happening last week against Iowa Western. Just not getting the run game going. No, not yeah. the, the defensive line for Iowa Western just was so dominant in that game. Yeah. There was just never any openings for any of the running backs. Somebody jump, no flag thrown. Deshaun Cash has time, and now he runs out of time, and he's going to be taken down. And is there no flag out there? I thought that was a free no. There, play. there is. There is. Oh, a, okay, okay. There is a flag on the far side. Okay. I, oh. I'm sure Garden City had and somebody now in he the runs out of time, zone, but somebody from Snow did move as well. Joe says he's working on uh, trying to get the instant replay working. We apologize. We'll uh, welcome all the uh, fans that are joining us from Garden City as well. Looks like it's going to be an offsides and give the Badgers five. Yeah, give a big shout out to our producer today, Joe Williams. Does a great job for us. Sure appreciate him and our camera people. It's a, a big undertaking, Snow TV here, and it's it's a it's a great thing, especially if you're the away team. So for you Bronkbuster fans watching, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be second down and call it seven. Hand off to mm. Manukin, and wow. again, wow. just coming through and blowing things up was Bryce Butler, 6'5", freshman from Toronto, Canada. Man, big fella just coming oh. right there up the middle. There was Nobody touched him. You don't see the Snow offensive line get beat like this very often. Usually Snow's got some 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 men out there, some beasts that just, just impose their will, and, and the opposite's happening so far today. Trayson Newton also on that defensive line. They go with three defensive linemen now as they bring in a nickel or dime package here for the Bronc Busters. Yeah. And, and the and Badgers in an empty backfield. It's just hard to lose that, that yardage there. It, it limits what you can do here on third. They show blitz, does Garden City. Cash back to pass, throws the underneath route. And Deuce Roberson tries to pick up the first down, and he has it. it. Yep, nice job by Deuce Roberson to do a tightrope walk down the sidelines. Yeah, absolutely. I was, uh, what I was going to say right after Deuce caught that was that works on third and six, third and five. I don't think it'll work on third and 11, but Deuce just made that, <laughs> the speed of Deuce Roberson just made that happen. And, and you know, you've thrown two picks. Maybe you need to, to do some easy passes like that. Now a handoff and getting to the outside is Rasul Fison. And Rasul has picked up a first down as the Badgers are out to midfield. Yeah, Good. best running play of the game, of the, yeah. of the entire day for Snow College so far. Carson Manukin, Rasul Fison. We might not see Targi Lamson. He has been really struggling with that turf toe. Two in the backfield now with Deshaun Cash, though. Carson Manukin and Rasul. Flag on the play going downfield for Marquise Montgomery. There We're going to have two flags here. What do you. You've got to have holding, probably, and pass interference, oh, I'm guessing. That, yeah, that looks like, you know, you always hear the, the cliche in, in football, in the vicinity of holding, <laughs> and that, that's what that one looks like. This one, for sure, a, a pass interference. So I think it's just going to, what, Offset. offsetting, right? Yeah. yeah. Badgers make some subs. Rasul Fison comes out. Bentley, the tight end, comes out. I know Bentley, man. You, you see him coming off at that big 8'8". Eight, eight. Doesn't he just look like a tight end? Oh, yeah. 6'5", 250, whatever he is. Just looks like a looks like an NFL tight end even. I, I agree. Got the size at least. Yep. So repeat first down. We did have offsetting penalties. It's first and 10 for the Badgers at midfield at the 50. Cash with Manukin in the backfield. Three wide outs to the left, a single wide out to the right. Pass is going to be a little <laughs> crossing route to Montgomery, and he can't hold on to it. Gosh, I'm hoping we can see this replay because they're setting they're setting up two in the slot out to the left and one on the line, obviously, and and oh, and that's just the end of that replay. But but they're they're sprinting one, the defense is sprinting one of those defensive backs at one of the slots and leaving one of them open. Deshaun just has to recognize that and hit it quick because that little slant route is there. But you got to hit it, hit your receiver in the numbers. Second and ten, handoff to Manukin. Manukin, not much of a hole, gains mm -hmm. maybe two. The ball comes loose. They say he was down. Boy, yeah, Garden City has really yeah. been tackling the football. I yeah. noticed that on some of the first plays. They are really going after the ball. Yeah, they're trying to create a turnover here. You know, two interceptions, no fumbles yet for the Badgers, but uh, but that one was that one was close. As you mentioned, they are they've been taught to rip that ball out when they're tackling. Adam Johnson on the field. He's in a slot position, empty backfield for Cash with five wide receivers, three to the right, two to the left. 
Third down and eight. So you don't have anybody head up on this closest slot receiver just a few yards out from the from the from the tackle. Can you hit him quick and maybe we'll see if that linebacker goes out and picks him up though. Well, the safety's moving up a little bit. Now the Badgers are going to take a timeout as the play clock was expiring. We'll take the timeout as well. A word from our sponsors. This is a Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. For more information, contact Utah Heritage Credit Union. Are you looking for a TV experience that you'll love? Then listen up. Mantitel has partnered with Philo to bring you over 50 channels of live and on-demand TV. Stream your favorite show. Shows from networks like Hallmark, Discovery, Nickelodeon, and more. The best part is Philo gives you over 50 channels with unlimited recording on all of your devices, so you can watch what you want, when you want, for only $20 a month. To sign up, go to go.philo.com slash mtcc. That's go.philo dot com slash mtcc. Man Titel, connecting your life since 1907. Welcome back to Terry Foote Stadium, Robert L. Stoddard Field on the campus of Snow College in Ephraim, Utah. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you. Snow College Badgers trail it by a score of seven to nothing and have it third and eight from the 48 yard line of Garden City. Empty backfield for Deshaun Cash, three wide outs to the right, two to the left. And long snap count. Cash going to take it on a quarterback draw. Tries to find a hole, gets a block. He's got the first down and steps out of bounds. Nice move by yep. Deshaun Cash. I'm not sure if that was designed or if he decided very quickly, nobody's open, I'm going to move it. Yeah, great job. You, you know, the, the throw game hasn't been working too well for the Badgers, so why not? Why not just put it on your athletic quarterback to catch the hole and get a first down there? Nice run for 9, 10 yards or so. Again, empty backfield. And again, five wide receivers. Cash fakes it to Taylor Larson, keeps it, turns it upfield, and picks up maybe four yards. Yeah, that was all on Deshaun Cash as well. He was just about taken down in the backfield, but he was able to make that first guy miss. Uh, Garden City, they're quick sideline to sideline. There's not a lot of room trying to go around the edges on them. They've, uh, they've done a good job bottling up the Badgers so far. Elijah Irvin split wide to the left, the near side. Hand off to Manukin. Manukin lowers the shoulder. Manukin, good carry out to the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up another third and three. Oh. And now a late flag comes in. Yeah, you got to hand it to the Badger offensive line. I gave him a hard time a little bit earlier, but that time the right side of the line doing a good job to open that hole for Carson Manukin. Well, the Badgers are not moving backwards and Garden City not moving backwards, but the referees are going to talk things over. Badgers came up clapping. So. <laughs> okay, I didn't notice that. Yeah, we're just waiting for, Wait, the, waiting for the referee to, to make a, a signal here. So Cole Bowers did step into uh, the medical tent right here. And like we mentioned, oh. that's what we don't want to see. The leading tackler on the year for yep. the Badgers, close to 50 tackles this year. And just an all-around, just a stud football player out there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Carson Manukin is thrown out of the game. He kicked a player. Wow. And that is just, that that's devastating. Yeah, you'll see the white hat come over to talk to Zach Erickson about it. But, yeah, Carson Manukin, they're already, you mentioned Targi Lampson hurt with that turf toe, not, not out there as much as he has been at the first of the year. He was out there for the first possession, and we haven't seen him since then. Yeah, it's a big contributor, big contributor kicked out of the game now for, the Badgers, Carson Manukin. And almost worse, uh, if it possibly could be worse, uh, you had third and short, now you've got third and long. Yeah. And you're yeah. trying to answer from the touchdown that uh, Garden City put on the board earlier. Yeah, definitely worse for this drive, for the full game. That's that's a yeah. that's a backbreaker. That really, really hurts. So so Rashul Faison is going to have to step up. We'll see if Targi Lampson gets back in there. He was, he was kind of walking on the field there. Yeah, he went out, and now he came off, and the Badgers are going to go with a single setback, and that is Rasul Fison. Trip split wide to the left. Long snap count, play action, back to pass is Cash. Cash goes deep, beautiful ball down the sidelines, just a little bit over the head of uh, Davis. Yeah, pretty pass, just, yeah, just too much was. on at that time. Now, now, we're talking about these running backs, and those three have been the big three this year, and, and really last year. 
But earlier in the year against a, a lesser opponent, I get it, but you had uh, – you had uh, Jalen Thompson, yep. the freshman, and you also had Bo Hall both go over 100 yards in that game rushing. So we'll see maybe if we see either of those guys get some reps today. All right, so fourth down, and uh, that drive was stopped because of the penalty. And like you say, long term, uh, you, now you are without Carson Manukin. Yeah. Badgers bring a man in motion. And kicking it away at the last second is Jackson, it's inside the five. Oh, what a great Baby. bounce, and it wow. stopped at the one yard line. What a great kick by Jackson. And they're putting it, they're putting it outside of the one, almost at the two, and that's, that's, a, that's, that's not really a very good spot, because that looked like it was on the line, like even in the half yard line. But, but yeah, you'll take that, what a kick, what a, talk about those lob wedge, those pitching wedge, that was it right there, my goodness. Jackson Reese with uh, the lob wedge inside the five-yard line. So we'll see if the Badgers can maybe do something on defense here as Garden City did it on defense to set up that first touchdown. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're a defender here, you're wanting uh, – I mean, you'll take a three and out, obviously, but you want six here. or You want two points here. You want to pin your ears back. You want to make something happen for your team and put points on the board. First and ten inside the two. Play action, in and out of the hands of the receiver, incomplete. That and those, was intended out here on the near side for uh, Giovanni Ribalta. Those types of plays right there, that quick little slant, I, that's something that I'll, I'll be interested to see if Snow College will start doing a little bit more today. Not having a ton of time for Deshaun Cash, do you just try and soften up that defense for your running game, maybe on, a, on some quick little slants, quick five and outs? This time they hand it off, finding a bit of a hole and getting out to the five-yard line. He is the uh, running back. Just about had him. You had one Badger defender in there with an arm out that possibly could have got him right there at the line of scrimmage, but uh, as it is, about a three-yard gain. Travis Dixon gets out over the five to the six. And now an empty backfield for Perry. Five wide receivers, three to the right, two to the left for Garden City. Back to pass is Perry. Perry has some time. Flushed out of the pocket wow. and sacked inside the five-yard line. Who comes up with it? John Talmoa Payao again. If you're not sure, if you're not sure who it was, just say John. You're probably right because <laughs> he, he is everywhere. He is. He's he's the Cole Bowers of the defensive line. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yep, you bet. That's a. Have we seen Bowers come out of the tent? No. Well, I, I haven't been watching that. We haven't seen him back on the field, but I yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not sure where he's at. So, punting situation, heels at the back of the end zone on fourth and nine. Badgers showing some pressure, but the kick gets away very quickly. Yeah. And Dawson Tanner is going to make the catch at about the 40. Tries to buy some uh, space. He does. He's at the 30. Breaks a tackle. No, he gets tackled, Gosh. and then a late flag comes in. Gosh. You had good position inside the 30, and then somebody blocked after the tackle. Yeah, and I don't know if it was a block in the back or just a crack back block that you can't do, but let's watch this right at the end. Dawson Tanner, what a great job by him athletically to get that great return. Yeah, just yeah, that it's crack, a crack back block. That, that, yep. block. that block on the side, you just, you just can't do that, and, and really it's – you know, five yards away from where the play was actually happening, it's going to count. It's going to count 15 yards against you, unfortunately, if you're a Badger fan. But so instead of having the ball inside the 25, the Badgers will have it uh, outside the 35. Still awesome field position. Good, good field, great position, field yeah. position. Yeah, you still. Oh. So there were two penalties on Snow. The one was down inside the five-yard line. Garden City declines that. They take the crackback penalty. And so they're actually they're actually going to mark this from the 27. So this will be outside from, the 40. It'll be at the 42-yard yeah, line. From where, from where that block happened, yeah. Well, now they went all the way to the 43. 16-yard penalty. One of those, <laughs> one of those rare 16-yard penalties that you don't see often. I see them in the NFL a time or two, but not too often in college. Yeah, yeah they don't. Because they don't exist is why you don't see them, but that's where they're marking it. Oh, oh there we yeah, go. There now we, go. we step up and fix it. <laughs> see, they're listening to us. <laughs> yeah, they're sure they. Those officials are listening to sure us. They know, they are. Yeah. 
So Fison and Targi Lampson in the backfield on either side of Deshaun Cash. Badgers have it first and ten. Hand off to Targi. Targi breaks the tackle, dives to the 30. I, I, I would love to see that kid come in here. You know, he's been hurt. I, I just I think Targi Lampson's a kid that can play four year. You saw Jalen oh, yeah. Warren a few years ago from Snow. I'll let Gary call this play and come back to it. First and ten, Badgers at the 30 now. Hand off to Targi again. Not much there, but Targi lowers the shoulder, pushes the pile forward, and gains two. So you're talking about Jalen Warren, a guy that's the second string running back be behind Najee Harris for the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. Kid that went to Snow, went up to Utah State, went to Oklahoma State, finished his career. Big time running back is what I'm getting at. And Targi just, Targi's obviously got more size than Jalen Warren did, but just just comparing him to a guy who made it all the way to the NFL. I think Targi's a guy that you could see playing Power 5 football next year. I, I agree. I think Rasul Fison is, too. Second and eight. Hand off to Fison. Not anything there. What a great yeah. defensive effort coming up uh, from the defensive end position that time. I don't I thought it was 96. Deshaun, Deshaun Cash has got to read that better. He's got to read that better and keep it himself. You've got that DN coming, or excuse me, that defensive tackle crashing that hard right at your running back. You fake that, pull it out, keep it, and you might have, you know, you might be back to, to third and eight here, third and, third and nine instead of third and 14. Right. So Deshaun sends a man in motion. That's Deuce Roberson under pressure mm -hmm. and just throws it away. Yeah, yeah, had to. Just. Badgers were setting up a screen, and I didn't even see anybody open. I, In fact, I don't see a receiver. I'm just wondering if that tight oh, end, uh, that yeah. tight end on the right side was over there as yep. an eligible receiver. There's no flag, so obviously there was an eligible receiver, but... I think you're gonna. If you're the Badgers, you're. Are you gonna punt here from the 34, 33 I yard think you line? Are. And I get it on on fourth and fourteen, but you're not play that field it, position game. Yeah, you've got to you've got to have an amazing kick again. And mm -hmm. how Other, many how many does Jackson Reese have in him? Yeah, and uh, I mean otherwise you're gaining thirteen yards here. Right. Uh, well, now we have a delay of game, so that helps. <laughs> that actually yeah. helps, right? Yeah. Helps the kicker. If yeah. you were going to fake it, it doesn't help. But yeah, a lot of times you'll see you'll see teams de decline these because right. they they don't want to give that extra room. But so Jackson Reese, the deep man, standing on the Badger side of the fifty. Now Garden City sends a man deep. Reese rolls out, nice backspin kick again. again. This might be it again. Takes Look at it. that. Oh, and it is down at the one-yard line. Boy, oh, boy. Wow. Down there to uh, to down it was number 81 for the Badgers, True Tanner. Wow, what a kick. Jackson Reese again, player of the game so far for the <laughs> Badgers. My gosh. Two of those that just hit within the five and bounce backwards, and they're able to, to stop it down within the two or the one-yard line. Looks like the two is where they're going to mark it again. With just 15 seconds left here in the first in the first quarter and a – Seven-point deficit for the Badgers. You want to, again, just like last time, you want to put points on the board if you're the Badgers here. Not just not just the three and out. You want to put points on the board. Get two or, yeah. or, you know, make something happen here. First and ten from the two-yard line. Handoff trying to go straight ahead, trying to get to the outside. Not much there. Getting to the five. Coming up, almost making a tackle near the goal line was Nick Haynes. But uh, good job by the running back for Garden City to get it out to the five-yard line. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter of play. We'll take this opportunity for a timeout. This is a Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. Utah Heritage Credit Union with offices in Ephraim, my favorite branch, by the way. Yeah. Gunnison and also in Moroni. Am Mount I missing Pleasant. one? Mount, Mount Pleasant yeah. and Moroni. Thank you. And I don't know how you knew that, but thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back with more the start of the second quarter right after this. Centricom believes the service relationship continues long after installation, and we're available to support you every step of the way. That's why if there is a problem with our equipment, a service visit from us means no cost to you. We know the value of a satisfied customer, so if you refer us to a friend, We'll take care of them and you'll get one month of service free. We promise to make your experience the best it can be. Centricom, keeping you connected.
Welcome back to Snow College. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you here at uh, Robert L. Stoddard Field. So the Badgers have gone another quarter without scoring. Uh, they were shut out last week, and that was the first time since 1984 that wow. Snow College had not scored any points. That's shocking. Unofficially. That, that was me going back looking uh, at what I had, but uh, unofficially, that's, that's what I had. Wow. Um, so now add another quarter to that. Gary was calling games back then. I would have been not even in kindergarten quite yet. Well, I wasn't calling in, in 84. Oh, not in 84. No. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was close, right? Yeah. I was here in Manti. Okay. Uh, Sampy County, but I was not calling the Snow College okay. games. <laughs> Second down and seven for the Bronc Busters. Single setback to the side of Perry. Perry fakes it, passes out to a wide receiver screen. Not much there, but hit and now bounces off. The Badgers just push and don't tackle. And this is going to turn into a first down all the way out to the 27-yard line. I don't know what, what that was, Gary. That, Yeah, if you're this, watching this replay. This is horrible just to, to push. Hmm. Why you don't wrap up, I, I don't have any idea. Well, and, and I can't get the number, but that's some excellent downfield blocking by the receivers for the Bronc Busters as well. Hand off and finding a small gap, getting across the 30-yard line, a gain of three out to the 33-yard line. Brock, Bunst, Brock Buster's uh, offense hasn't really done much today. Snow's defense has done a good job, but the one thing that I have been impressed with was is their downfield blocking from their slots and their receivers on the outside. Well, the Bronc Busters do have a big offensive line, but the Badger defense has been able to hold their own so far. Second down and six after a gain of four. Perry, play action, looks to pass. Now he looks to run. Now he tries to find an opening, and he's going to lose yardage back near the 30-yard line. Who's that right Right defensive end for Snow College out there? Is that 42? Am I getting that number right? Zach, Zach Nowatsky. Zach Nowatsky, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if he's outside backer or defensive end. He made that happen right there. He... He just he, he fought off his block just enough to make Perry, the quarterback, turn back towards the other side. Otherwise, he might have had some room around that left side. Be third and long. The Badgers jump. Do they get back? No. This is a free play. And going down the sidelines with some opening, turning around at the last second, is able to knock it away. I think was Nick Haynes. Is that Nick Haynes over there for the Badgers? Yeah. I, well, maybe it's not. Is that No, I, th I think you're right, but... That was excellent defensive back play. Oh, gosh, I can't get that number. Is that the – anyway, excellent defensive back play for the Badgers to stay with that one and not give up a long play. Just hand fight right to the last second, turn around, get in the way of the receiver. Incomplete. Quincy, but, Quincy Milholm. Okay. Well, Quincy, good job. But five-yard penalty, as you mentioned. Free play for the Bronc Busters is what it was. So third and three. Big third down for the defense to try to get off the field here. Garden City, empty backfield, play action. Quarterback's going to keep it Perry. Perry has the first down as he gets out near the 45-yard line, marking down at the 44. Nice run by Perry. Yeah, that's perfect option there to keep it himself that time because the, the Badgers had a blitz coming. The, blitz, the run right, went right into that blitz. Perry keeps it himself, is able to get a first down. Quick pass is going to be hit by the uh, linebacker. I think that's Nowatsky again. Was it Nowatsky? Yeah. Yep. Zach Nowatsky just gets his hands up. That's what they always teach you. That's what they always teach you. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hand up, get in the passing lane. And Nowatsky did just that. So it'll bring up second and 10 after the incomplete pass. John Talmoa payout comes off for the Badgers as the Badgers make several subs. <clears throat> and they jump again. Another free play for Garden City, and again, another pass down the sidelines. This one is going to be caught wow. inside the 15-yard line. Good defensive coverage out there, just yeah. not able to go up and get a hand on it. So the free play again burns the Badgers on the uh, offsides. Yeah, I was going to say that's, again, on that side, just excellent defensive back play. Run with the receiver, turn around at the last second, knock it down. Receiver just made a much, just an excellent play there. Just a highlight type play, really. So Garden City threatening to put some more points on the Badgers here. Inside the 15-yard line, first and 10 from the 12. Perry in the backfield, has Dixon with him. Back to pass, throws the crossing route, in and out of the hands. Almost picked off, but nobody could get to it. Oh, yes, that, that's a chance to change the game right there for the Badgers after that bounces off the shoulder pads of the intended receiver. Could have came down with that. Would've, that would have changed a lot. 
So it'll be second down and 10 from the 12. And I think we've got a quarterback sub again, haven't we? No, is Perry still out there? Oh, it's the tight end looking at his. Usually when they're looking at that uh, on the wrist. It's the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So second and 10, Perry in the backfield. Sets up the screen to Dixon. Dixon mm -hmm. makes the catch, good blocking out in front of him. Lowers the shoulder, gets inside the five yard line. It looks like it'll be just short of the first down. That play was set up beautifully. Yeah, it really was. And you had, you had offensive linemen down blocking, but the Badgers, I'm trying to see who got the, who got the hit on that because he did an excellent job to get past the offensive line blocking downfield to make a play. Otherwise, that would have been six. So it's going to be third and two for Garden City. Dixon in the backfield with Perry. Two wide outs split wide to the left and a single wide out to the right. Hand off to Dixon. Dixon lowers the shoulder, forces his way forward. I think he's going to be just short of the first down. He gets to the three, but I think he had to get to the two. It's going to be fourth. All right. Coach yeah. Chittister, well, I, got, I asked you first. Your, your defense <laughs> is playing really well. I would take the points, but it looks like Garden City going to go for it. Yeah. And you've got Dixon in the backfield, and, well, I think they've subbed him out now. Yeah, going with this funny, they're, they're putting three offensive linemen clear far to the left and just keeping three offensive linemen right next to the center. Funny formation. Perry is going to take it, and I it. don't know. Not going to get no, it. No, I don't think he did. All right, Badger offense. defense held. All right, offense. Your Badger defense has done a lot for you. Let's go out and answer, huh? Because, yeah, what a good play by the Badger defense. Funny formation that yeah, time. That if you watch that replay there, just they, they went with that, what they used to call it. That wasn't the old Utah formation. What did they call it where you, where you put three offensive linemen right. clear far to the one side. You can throw to somebody behind those offensive linemen right. out on that side. Or if the defense doesn't adjust, you just run right up the middle, which they tried to do, and it didn't work. Sony Vunipola, we're going to give him credit for the uh, tackle. There you go. And we've got a referee trying to retie his shoe, apparently. You, uh, do we have an injured player? We got, is that the only reason we've got a timeout? Or This isn't ESPN Plus, so we're not doing a, a media timeout, but apparently somebody took a timeout. So we're going to take a timeout as well. This is another Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. Utah Heritage Credit Union for auto, ATV, mortgage, and new home construction loans. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. They named it Cache because it was there they would store their goods and come together to trade and connect. This spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. They are Central Utah's financial outfitter. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. Cache Valley and Central Utah are rooted in grand expeditions. Let's keep that heritage alive together. Discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back once again to Snow College. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner, Snow College Badgers, have their fifth possession coming up, and they start at their own three-yard line as the defense had held Garden City on a fourth and one. Yeah, now take it over. Garden City, what, what did they go there, 97 or so yards on that drive? 96 yeah, yards all yeah, the way from one side to the complete other, but zero points out of it. Blitz coming. Deshaun Cash back to pass, going down the sidelines, got a man out there, and Davis adjusts and makes the catch. Yeah. Good job by Deontay Davis. You said that right, Gary, just adjusted to that pass. Perfect location for Deontay to turn around, slow down just a little bit, let that defensive back get past him, come back for the ball, great catch. Badgers moving all the way out to the 37-yard line, 38-yard line, first and 10. And now they hand it off to Rasul Fison. Fison gets a bit of it. Now he breaks a tackle. Fison still on his feet, has the first down and driven out of bounds at the 49. And breaks a tackle, breaks about three tackles out there. You had those mustard colored helmets, a few of them hitting Fison that time and he just fights through it. Enough for a first down, what a good run by Rasul. Fison in the backfield with Deshaun Cash. Badgers run hurry up here, no huddle. Two wide outs to the right, two wide outs to the left. Cash looks to the sidelines, gets the call, now sets up the play. Brings Roberson in motion, hands it to Roberson. Roberson not much there, 
as he's met in the backfield, falls forward for a loss of one. Yeah, short side of the field sweep that time, and that fooled nobody on Garden City. They just stayed home, played where they needed to, and, uh, and, and took Roberson down for a one-yard loss. So it'll be second down and 11. Badgers at the 48-yard line now. Same formation, two to the right, two to the left. Fison in the backfield. Garden City adjusts. Nope, check it. It's Targi Lamson who's checked in. And Targi's in the backfield now. And now Targi moves from the left to the right side of Deshaun Cash. Blitz coming. Cash steps up, throws over the middle. Got a man out there. It's Roberson. Roberson breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Snow Collie. Yeah, what a play. Good pass by Deshaun Cash. Forget about those two interceptions, kid. Go out there and throw a post. Just a dime to uh, Deuce Roberson that time, and Deuce is able to run away from the defense. Six points. Hopefully tie this thing up with an extra point right here. Well, extra points are no guarantee either for Snow College. They missed a, a field goal. Now the Badgers going to run <laughs> kind of a wacky setup here as they start with uh, their whole line split wide to the left. Badgers are set. They snap it, and Taylor Larson pitches it back to the kicker, and the kicker's wow. in the end zone <laughs> for a two-point conversion. <laughs> I Put saw that. them. I, I'm going to keep it right here because i got to tell you, I saw them working on this last week at Iowa Western, and I thought, what are you guys doing? What are you? And, and they have several different things that they can do out here. So if, and you mentioned this before, if the defense doesn't adjust, then, then you've got different options. Toss, it out, toss it out to the toss eligible to the receiver behind yep. five offensive linemen. Yeah. Or run it, or in this case, start to run, and then pitch it back to the kicker. <laughs> how, many options, how many options do you see in college football from placeholder to kicker? <laughs> <laughs> Not too many. That's, uh, that's a fun play right there, yeah. Just the placeholder stands up. He, if, if they don't come to him, just literally just a pitch outside, just like a triple option, like you're watching Air Force players or something right. like that. And and your kicker gets the two-point conversion, which happens never. I, I mean, Not I on a set play. You yeah. might see it if, if the play's broken up, sure. if you miss the snap or something like yeah. that, but very seldom you see it like this. So the Snow College has actually taken the lead, 8-7. to seven. And got to hand it to Deshaun Cash on that drive right there. As we mentioned, two picks there in the first quarter. First two drives, first two passes. His first two passes Go for picks. interceptions. And then that drive, he throws a couple of absolute dimes to get down the field. Uh, one to uh, Deontay Davis and then the touchdown to Deuce Roberson. So the Badgers to kick it off. Single man deep for Garden City. This is going to be a low driving kick. Is going to be fielded on the run at about the five-yard line to the 20. The 25, the 30, breaking a tackle and taken down at the 35-yard line. Thought we had a flag out there. That's just a mustard helmet rolling on the field. <laughs> these, uh, if you're watching, you you see these. This is, I I don't know that I've ever seen yellow on yellow on yellow, meaning helmet, jersey, pants, in a football game ever. And and Garden City. Garden City's yeah, got it. Th yellow on yellow on yellow. So the 35-yard line will be where the Bronkbusters will take over first and ten. Last uh, drive by the Bronkbusters covered 96 yards. They went from their own two to the Badger two-yard line. Most important, most important stat, though? No points. No points. That's the most important stat for snow fans. <laughs> well, well, what I meant by that, I don't mean, <laughs> and I don't, I don't even mean that as a snow or Garden City. It's just right. the one that matters well, is, is yeah, what I right. mean. I mean, it's cute right. to get 96 yards and pad those stats, but you don't put points on the board. Who cares? Good run that time. A new running back in the backfield is uh, Freeman. And Freeman gets back-to-back -back carries here. Picked up the first down on the first carry. This one gets maybe a yard, maybe two, uh, depending on the spot here. So Freeman on the carry. Looks like just one yard. It'll be second and nine. Garden City going without a huddle. And we've got a new quarterback in there. Is that Clerk? No. I have a, I am struggling. Caden Johnson, I think. Johnson in shotgun formation. Takes the snap, hands it off, trying to find an opening, spread out and dragged out of bounds. Oh, and that might a be flag. a flag. There it is. You gotta quit when you get to the sidelines and the Badger defense does not. 
And that's going to be 15 yards and a first down when you had them third and long. You had that defensive back out there trying to get a number. Man, it's hard to get these numbers sometimes. I, th I thought it was number three for the Badgers, but that's Marquise Montgomery, so that's certainly not him. But anyway, you had that defensive back that was just driving, just just extending it, extending it all the way to the sideline, just driving that running back out of bounds, whether you tackle him or not. If he steps out of bounds, who cares? But then they just come to clean it up after he steps out of bounds and right. tackle him and... and it's always going to be a it's always going to be a penalty when you do that after they stepped out of bounds, and that just bails completely oh, bails yeah. Garden City out. Snow did a great job extending that play all the way to the sideline, doing exactly what you need to do on a sweep like that. So Caden Johnson is at quarterback, back to pass, throws deep down the sidelines and overthrows the intended receiver. That was Jalen Young, the receiver out there. I think I think. I'm thinking that is it 16? It is 16. Gabe Friend. Gabe Friend. There you go. From yeah, Chandler, I thought it was Arizona. 19, John. But Gabe Friend was the one that came in before. You're right. Yeah. So Gabe Friend, we apologize. So Perry, after that, on the last drive, he kept a ball and got a first down on it. He came up limping a little bit. So I wonder if that may be why he had to come out of the game for Garden City. Second and ten. Badgers go with just three down linemen. Handoff and getting about five yards. Nice carry out there. Is uh, Nevion Hodges. Stockton Bramwell coming up and, and making that first hit for the Badgers, doing a good job from a defensive back position to limit the run to only five or six yards. Third and manageable here, third and four. Hard snap count, Badgers don't move, and Friend is going to look to the sidelines. In the backfield, he's got Freeman with him. Back to pass, goes to Freeman out of the backfield. Freeman makes the catch, and he's short of the first down. What do you do here? Is Go for it on fourth. Is that Cole Bowers coming up and getting that hit? I think it was 30, wasn't it? Uh, or was it Keeney Vunipola, number Vunipola, 20? I think. I don't that? see Bowers out there. Okay. I couldn't tell if it was 30 or 20. Uh, but, yeah, fourth and short now, fourth and two. If you've got the field goal kicker, I would absolutely kick it. But that's, you know, that's a 46-yarder. That's a long kick. Yeah, that's a 46-yarder at the JC level. That's that's a tough kick. So The they're kicker go from for Iowa Western could do it. Oh, yeah? He had a leg, I tell you. Big fourth down. Play action, quick slant pass, and it's going to be knocked down. Is it going to be incomplete or a fumble? They say incomplete. Yeah, Ott Joe so. What Coming up with a big hit there. Yep. Just gave that little bit of cushion to the receiver. Good, decent throw. Maybe a little bit high, but a, a decent play call and a decent throw. Acho So just broke, broke that up with the big hit. Or are they saying that's 14, Bolstra Solisandro? That's who they're putting up on the big. Yeah, they're giving it to. No, all they, all but they what? announced. Oh, there we go. Northfield so. over here. Yeah, yeah. Acho So was, was with the hit, so. Yeah, so Ocho's we got to keep that in mind. That might be uh, Steel Man play of the game. Yeah, I know it's early, that's a good one. but we ought to keep that one in mind. Well, that's a good one because you're up by one point here and you uh, pass break up like that. Just, act, just a great defensive back play. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Snow has the ball. Play action. Cash is in Dude. trouble, and Deshaun Cash is going to lose yardage all the way back inside the 20. Yeah, nothing happening there. Deshaun Cash just trying to roll out to his right, you know, move that pocket to the right, and, and that was not happening. Gosh, I'm trying to get that number out there. <laughs> it was, was it Raymond Cutts again, number zero? Seven, was he, it zero? Uh, he's been all over out there defensively. It might have been that number. He's that defensive end. Yeah, that middle backer, Ja'Cory Hammett. Uh, number okay. seven, it might have been him too. But Second and long for Snow. Handoff is going to go to Rasul Fison. Fison to the 20-yard line, so a short gain. Yeah, the middle, just the middle of the line that time did their job for the Bronc Busters. Number 99, we've called his name before. Bryce Butler in there on that one. I think number 94, Jesse Wilson as well. A couple of big, big, big kids down there. Third and long. Pass out in the flats, too high. Incomplete intended for Marquise Montgomery. The Badgers are saying somebody jumped off sides. Coach, Coach Zach Erickson right in the ear of uh, the judge on this side, and, and they don't throw the flag. So the Badgers are looking at fourth and long. Yeah, it makes you wonder. Yeah, they're, they're having a very heated spirited conversation down here. Erickson's, Coach Erickson's walking away, not happy with that. I wonder if Deshaun Cash maybe thought he had a free play I there as well. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. 
So a punting situation as Garden City holds. And the big play was that first, first down where the Badgers got taken down for the sack. High kick is going to be taken at the 37-yard line. Retreating back inside the 35, and great defensive effort out there by, is that Roberson? Yeah, the kick coverage that time for the Badgers was absolutely perfect. You had four guys on that returner for the Bronc Busters. And, or and was it Meek Ogbonna? Meek, sorry, not yeah. Deuce, Meek Ogbonna. Yeah, yeah, just perfect, like we say. Just, just kind of bracketed that returner, four guys. Nobody overshot it. And uh, so another good kick there by, uh, by the punter. Jackson Reese. Yeah. So mark it at the 34-yard line. This is where they started their last drive at the 35, this time at the 34. And again, it's Friend in the backfield. Handoff gets out over the 35 to the 36-yard line. So a gain of two. So Perry, who started the game, we did see Friend come in on, uh, what, just one play and then went back out. And Perry came back out again but we have not seen Perry on these last two possessions. Yeah, ever since that carry, like we mentioned, that he took it up the middle of the field. Travis Dixon in the backfield with Friend. Three wide outs to the near side. Tight end to the far side. Nick Haynes comes out there defensively. Handoff is going to go and Ooh. going up and over the top, actually to uh, one of the uh, receivers are in the slot. That looked like Carson Manukin going high. Yeah, yeah, just try, trying to hur hurdle that defender. You're gonna get you're you're gonna get killed. <laughs> but it worked for him. It got him an extra couple of yards that time. Yep. Third and short. Third and two here for Garden City. Again, trip split wide to the left. High snap, but he brings it down. Handoff is going to be short, short of the first down. Yeah, just only, short. Only a half a yard short. Yeah, you're going to have fourth and just just a couple of feet here. But in their own territory, I'd be shocked if Garden City doesn't punt here. With, with the way their offensive line hasn't gotten push on runs, I just it looks like they might be thinking about it. Well, they're taking plenty of time Yeah, here. they're either going to go for it or call a timeout, one or the other. Well, no movement yet on the sidelines. Yeah. Now they make the move, and it's going to be a punt. So, yeah, with 10 seconds left on the play clock, you got four and a half left here in the second quarter. 8-7 score. Garden City down one. They're going to have to call timeout. That play clock under five. And they do call a timeout, and we will take the timeout as well. This is another Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. Utah Heritage Credit Union, your local credit union, with offices in Moroni, Mount Pleasant, Ephraim, and Gunnison, proud to support Snow College. The Snow College Campus Store has something for every member of the family to show their Badger pride. They have hoodies, mugs, car stickers, and more. Online students and parents can get in on the fun too, because now the Campus Store is online at store.snow.edu. Go there now for all of your Snow College apparel needs. Visit store.snow.edu. That's store.snow.edu. Welcome back once again to Robert L. Stoddard Field, Terry Foote Stadium. On the campus of Snow College in Ephraim, Utah, beautiful fall afternoon. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you. Joe Williams on the TriCaster, making the stream possible. Thanks to Emily and uh, Carter out there running the cameras and making this uh, broadcast possible. Punting situation, fourth and short. Dawson Tanner back deep to receive. Long snap count. And the kick is away. And fair catch signaled for mm -hmm. by Dawson, mm -hmm. and he takes it at about the 22-yard line. Oh, you heard me doing a little, some exhales there. Ooh, because Dawson, when that, right before that kick was going up, you saw him trying to shield that sun. That sun is yep. right where he was looking at that. So when he called for that fair catch, and he's kind of dancing around back there and not yep. real confident, right. whew, good for him to catch that and get the ball at the 20 instead of at the 5 or the 10 if it would have bounced. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see if the Badgers can put one more on here. Four minutes left, just over four minutes left here in the first half, but just a one-point lead. Be huge for them to put another one on, on the Bronc Busters because they get the ball to start the second half as well. Good point. Bentley, the tight end in the backfield this time. Cash with Rasul Fison to his right. Hand off to Fison. Fison tries to go straight ahead and gets not even back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose half a yard. So if we watch this replay, watch Bentley go through from that H-back position. He just steps past that defensive end. I think 
you know, they, this is Snow's seventh game. I think three or four or five of those previous games that Snow's played, Bentley can get through the line and do that and pick up that second level because they, the D end isn't athletic enough to make the play that far to start from the defensive end position and then to get to that running back. Bentley's got to recognize that and pick up that D end so your running back can get three or four yards and stop worrying about 10, 12, 15 yards. Second and 11, Bentley now in motion from left to right. Cash back to pass, throws, got a man out there, Taylor Larson. Larson hit near the 30-yard line, mark him down at the 29. So it'll be third and about two. Is this the latest in a game that we've that I've ever called with you where we've called Taylor Larson's name? You know, oh, we're almost yeah. halftime before we say Taylor Larson's name, which isn't normal. Now, normally he's returning punts, and you have Tanner back there doing it now. Uh, but... Uh, Anyway, yeah, Taylor's usually involved a lot more heavily a lot earlier. I, I, I see your point, and yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Pistol formation now as Fison is deep behind Deshaun Cash on third and two. Handoff to Fison. Fison tries that left side. Nothing there. But a second effort is going to get close. I, think I was good. counting him out. He was hit in the backfield. All of a sudden, Fison comes sprinting. Well, not sprinting but at least falling through the line, yeah. and he's going to be very close to the first down. They give it to yeah, him. Yeah, where they're marking that. That's a first. Wow, that's all Rasul Faison. Kind of all ran, Rasul. Yeah, kind of ran into his own guy out there on the left side, but was able to fall forward enough, and that's huge with under three minutes left. Even if you don't score, just don't give the ball back to the Bronx Busters. Agreed. First and 10 for Snow out to the 32-yard line. Flag, somebody moved. They blew it dead. I didn't know if that was maybe Bentley coming on that that motion if he started running forward before the snap. Let's see. Nope, nope, that's not who I, they call it on. Call it on one of the offensive linemen, and, and I, I didn't, didn't see it on I that I didn't replay. see anybody move. Uh-uh, yeah. And it's the, it's actually one of the, I don't know, he's at the C, what's that? <laughs> the what? The referee with the C. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, I have no idea what yeah, they that, are that, anymore. It's a, new, it's a new official over the last five years or so that they brought in to help the umpire in the back there. First and 15 now. Badgers roll to the right. Pass, short, and coming up with it is Taylor Larson. Wow, and he had to go low for that one. I thought that was a. I thought that was going to hit the ground. I did too. Watch this replay There's and how low, just fingertips right at the 40 there, or on, on the four for the 40, I should say, about the 37. Second down and four now for Snow. They are at the 38-yard line. Got to get to the 42. Clock continues to run. We're under two minutes to play here. And they're not in a huge hurry. Snow isn't yet. Handoff is going to be to Fison. Fison, not much there, but he bulls his way forward, and I think he's going to have enough. I'm looking at the far, and he says yes, first down. Yeah, moving the sticks. So now, if you're Snow, you got to be hustling. You're 148 left. Here, two timeouts, but but you can't be calling plays and huddling up. you got to get up there quick. Garden City's lucky they didn't get a face mask on that one. They had right. a hand right up there on Rasheel Faison's face mask, but they must not have grabbed. So, First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Cash back to pass. Pressure comes from the right, steps up in the pocket, throws, got a man out there. Wow. Pass is caught by Roberson. Roberson inside the 25-yard line. And be careful, Deuce, out there. Let's not... He, he, he had something to say there <laughs> uh, to the Garden City defensive back. But, man, he what a good throw and catch by Deshaun Cash. And good job by the offensive line to let that pocket set up for Deshaun to be able to sit back and let the play develop down the field. Clock continues to run down to a minute 20 remaining here in the first half. Fison to the right of Cash. Cash, long snap count. I guess the Badgers figuring we're close enough now we can run a little more time. Yeah. With Plays coming in from the sidelines. Now under a minute to go. Hand off to Fison. Fison, not much there. And finally decides to take it forward. He's to the 20. So, uh, so now Snow's going to call the timeout. 53 seconds left here. They have one timeout left after this one. And, and if, if you're planning on just taking shots at the end zone, I'm okay with maybe taking that time. you got plenty of time. you got a minute left. If you're going to run the ball, I mean, they've wasted 20 seconds there right. waiting to get that play call in. I say go. If you're going to run the ball, go with 110, 105, not, not 55. But anyway. All right. Timeout on the field. We're going to take just a 30-second timeout here. This is another Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. 
T.O. Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of pre-engineered metal buildings of all sizes. Plus, they are your headquarters for custom metal roof and wall panels for your home or business, including all trim and accessories. All of their roof and wall panels are available in several gauges in over 20 different colors. For a free cost estimate or more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. 800-262-5347. That's 800-262-5347. Online at cobuildings.com. Welcome back once again to Snow College. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you. Snow College with the ball at the 20 yard line of Garden City. Badgers lead it eight to seven with 53 seconds remaining. 53.6 to be exact. Shotgun formation, play action, cash under pressure, throws, got a man out in the flats, caught by Targi Lamson, knocked out of bounds. It's gonna be short of the first down at the 16 yard line. Oh, they keep clock running is, the clock. Why is the clock running? Yeah, they got to fix that. They got to. Shouldn't the clock be stopped? Yeah, now the official's stopping the clock. Well, no, they, they've got to put seven more seconds on that. It was running at, at 40, 45 or so. Yeah. 47 is what they're going to put it, put back on it. So not a bad little play there along the sideline. Get your get the ball on to your playmaker. You know, in space, see what Targi Lamson could do. Good tackle by Garden City, though. Yeah, well, Garden good tackle. City, knocked him out of bounds, right. I should say. Well, still counts as a tackle, yeah. right? Yeah. And they were able to get some pressure on Cash. Cash moved up. Deshaun moved up to uh, make the pass out in the flats. Two wideouts left, two wideouts right. From the near side, Elijah Irvin, Dawson Tanner. Then on the other side, you've got Taylor Larson and Marquise Montgomery. Deshaun rolls out to the left, buys some time, throws into the corner of the end zone, too far, incomplete, intended out there for Taylor Larson. You saw, watch on this replay, you see that slot man go, if he turns around right there, I think he can find a little bit of a hole in that zone defense at about the 10 to 12 yard line, would have given you a first down, but Snow's gonna have to just try a field goal here. So on to do the uh, kick here for Snow College is uh, Jackson Walker. Out of the hold of Taylor Larson, this is going to be a 33-yard field goal attempt. Snap is good. The placement's good. A kick is blocked. Boy, that happened last week as well against Iowa Western. The Badger special teams have been struggling as of late. Yeah, so trying to go up by, by four. but Just right up yeah. the middle, just yeah. blowing up that, uh, that line. Now 33 seconds. If you're Garden City, do you take some shots here? Yeah, yeah. I mean they've they've had some open receivers. Well, not really open receivers, but they've had passes that worked along the sidelines. So, yeah, if if I'm Garden City, I take I take a few shots up the sideline for sure. You got two timeouts. If you're excuse me, just one timeout for Garden City left. Right. But but you can definitely work the middle of the field as well. You'll see the center field safety back for the Badgers clear far back, almost in a almost you know, punt return type <laughs> place. He's 25 yards behind the line of scrimmage, so nothing gets behind him. Empty backfield for Friend. Pass out in the flats is going to be caught. Trying to fight for extra yards. Now the Badgers trying to pull the ball loose. The helmet comes off. And that ball did come out. Uh, but I think but, they but blew they, it dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the progress was stopped. But that's the best thing that could happen right there if you're the Badgers. Catch a little five-yard pass, stop them in the field of play. And... Why is the clock stopped now? Because yeah, you had you had a helmet come off for one of the Garden City players, so he has to go out. But but I think that that should start right back up again. So they're resetting the game clock to 26, and I think that's going to start on his whistle. But it does kind of give a break to Garden City. Definitely a break to Garden City here. Let them, especially if they're going to try to take uh, another shot here at the end zone. Yeah, and they're now, not. Now they're not. They're going to just step up under center, his friend, and he's going to take a knee and end this first half. But you have some other officials running in to talk. It really, really probably doesn't matter too much whether the clock starts right here or not, because they're just going to take a knee. But I guess if it. it Oh, is that Snow calling that timeout? Uh, I 
I didn't hear if it was Snow taking the timeout. I really don't know why either team uh, yeah, would take why, a timeout right now. E either team should just should just both teams just want to get into the get into the locker rooms. It looks like here. Well, they're looking over to the Garden City sideline. Well, <laughs> maybe just because it took so long, they're going to charge somebody. Fascinating radio, folks. For jo you jo folks. <laughs> Joe says Garden City actually took the timeout. Okay. But they didn't ever go to the sidelines, and they're not going to use the timeout. Maybe because the play clock was running down. They take a knee, and that is going to be the end of the first half. Snow College leads it by a score of 8-7. to seven. And we'll take this opportunity for a timeout. We'll be back with the halftime show. Uh, again, a reminder that Utah Heritage sponsors our timeouts. Utah Heritage Credit Union for auto, ATV, mortgage, and new home construction loans. We'll be back in two minutes. I'm Dr. Jason Standring, Central Valley Medical Center. I wanted to become a doctor because as I grew up, my family had a family doc that delivered my siblings and took care of us when we were sick and if we had to go to the hospital. And I wanted to do the same thing. Family medicine allows me to do that. I love the fact that I can take care of families throughout their lifespan, from birth and throughout their growing years and their families, even until the end of life care. I'm Dr. Jason Standring at Central Valley Medical Center and we're accepting new patients and I'm eager to get to know you and your family. Little Caesars of Ephraim and Nephi have expanded to a third location in Gunnison, inside Gunnison Sinclair. Hours Monday to Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Come enjoy classics like crazy bread, cheese, pepperoni, and three meat treat pizzas. Little Caesars also offers wings, dip, soda, and an awesome family meal deal, including two liters of soda, pepperoni or cheese pizza, and a crazy combo for just $9.99. Come enjoy one of the best deals in America. Little Caesars, Ephraim, Nephi, and Gunnison. Why do people everywhere love my style checking? It has rewards you'll flip for. I love my travel rebates! With my style, the spotlight's always on me. We can send money with Zelle. Good boy. For me, it's instant issue debit cards. Find out why people everywhere love my style checking from Mountain America at macu.com. Are you looking for a TV experience that you'll love? Then listen up. Mantitel has partnered with Philo to bring you over 50 channels of live and on-demand TV. Stream your favorite shows from networks like Hallmark, Discovery, Nickelodeon, and more. The best part is Philo gives you over 50 channels with unlimited recording on all of your devices, so you can watch what you want, when you want, for only $20 a month. To sign up, go to go.philo.com slash mtcc. That's go.philo com slash mtcc. Mantitel, connecting your life since 1907. Welcome back to the Halftime Show. Gary Chedister with you along with uh, Greg Sterner. The Snow College Halftime Show. Snow College is the nation's finest transfer institution with campuses in Ephraim and also in Richfield. Visit snow.edu. Uh, very little scoring as we uh, run down the, the scoring summary here. Uh, Garden City got on the board first in the first quarter with 8-12 remaining, a 17-yard touchdown pass from uh, Perry to Dixon. The point after was good and Garden City led it 0-7. to seven. That came on their third possession after an interception, and they only had to go five yards, but the touchdown pass was 17 because they had lost some yardage there. So a short field, once again, that's something that I talked about with you earlier. Iowa Western scored 26 points. They did it all on short fields or even with the defense. Yeah. Badgers come back with a touchdown in the second quarter with 10.07 remaining on a 52-yard pass to uh, Deuce Roberson, and the two-point conversion was good, and Snow College led it 8-7. That's where we're at right here. So I think Snow College figuring, hey, we're having trouble getting points on the board of late. Maybe that factored into the two-point conversion. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Or, or is that just, as we mentioned, it's that funny formation that they ran, and they just it's just Zach Erickson saying, guys, we're going to run this. Here's your options. You can kick it. You can, you know, do what. You can throw it out to the outside. You can run that little option that you run to try and get two points if you see that it's there, and obviously that's what they saw, and it and it worked. And you get a kicker, get his first points of his career, non 
extra point or field goal. You know what I mean? Right, the, running, right. it, running it into the end zone. So, yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, if, if you're Garden City, you've got 156 total yards. You've got to feel pretty happy about your offense. But, again, as we mentioned there in the first half, when they went on that 96-yard drive that resulted in exactly zero points, you're, you're a little bit frustrated that you got nothing out of that one. Even if you would have kicked, you would have been, been up 10-8 here. But, anyway, um, yeah, if you're, if you're the Badgers, 161 yards by – uh, Deshaun Cash, which is right about his average for the game. He averages about 170 some odd yards per game through the air. So Deuce Roberson, really the, the MVP of the first half. Well, Deuce Roberson and, and the punter. What the, um, Jackson Reese. Jackson Reese, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he just nailing those two times where Garden City had to start at the one yard line. But Deuce Roberson with three catches for 102 yards and a touchdown. That long 52 yard touchdown from Deshaun Cash to Roberson. So those are some of the, the individual stats that stand out to me. Uh, uh, just keep getting that ball to Deuce. Let him do some things in space. See what he can do. Uh, and and I, I'm expecting maybe a little bit from Adam Johnson as well. Uh, he's probably the fastest player on the Badgers. They haven't been able to get him the ball. Sometimes they like to run that uh, jet sweep to him, bring him in motion from a slot or even as yeah. a wide out yeah. and uh, run that jet sweep. Or... Uh, maybe a pass out in the flats to get him in an open look as well. Yeah. yeah. Kind of interesting uh, looking at this. Uh, neither team has, uh, has really taken it the length of the field with the exception of Snow. They got their TD um, from their own three-yard line. That's yeah. when they ended up with that touchdown drive. Only two first downs starting at your own three-yard line and getting a touchdown, wow. two first downs. Wow. Chunk plays, just big plays down the sideline, yeah. Right, and uh, neither team, what I meant, meant to say is neither team able to really um, put together long, sustained drives. I mean, the Badgers, I guess you can call it, not, I don't call it a sustained drive if you only pick up two first downs yeah. going what, 97 yards. What was that one? Was it, wasn't it it three plays on I that, think that it was. drive? You had the big long pass right here. You had the run by Fison on the, on the left side and then the 52-yard pass to Deuce Roberson. So, yeah, definitely not a sustained drive. You'll take it. I mean, you'll take every drive being two or three plays. But, but uh. Well, uh, joining us here in the booth is uh, former Badger head coach Paul Tidwell. And uh, I saw him last night, and so I invited him to come up and join us. It's been a while since you've been in this booth oh, it's with a headset on. Long time. <laughs> Long time, but <laughs> thank you for the invite, and it's uh, so great to be back in Ephraim and San Pete County and these beautiful mountains, and to be here at Snow College, it's it's wonderful. Well, we we had you in uh, in the area for uh, induction to the Hall of Fame for head coach Keith Upressa, who you brought to Snow College as an assistant coach, and you told the story last night. Uh, that was fascinating to, to find out that he was up for offensive coordinator, but you wanted both of them, and, and President Benyon actually made that happen for you. Yes, that was a, <clears throat> a great uh, asset for us to, to get both Keith and Mike Canales at the same time. They both interviewed for the same position, and uh, I went to President Benyon, and I said, man, that Keith Uper S is impressive, and he says, let's make it work, and, and he did, and... Um, we're so grateful for Keith and his family, uh, him and Kaipo, to, to have stayed here at Snow College as long as they did. And we coached together for eight years. And, you know, to have that stability at a junior college where, you know, a lot of times a junior college is a place where coaches go to try to make a name of themselves and move on. And um, to have a, the stability of, of the eight years that I had with, with Keith and Mike and other coaches, it was fantastic. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because uh, this year, uh, Zach Erickson is finding that out. Zach has all new assistant coaches. Not one of them came back for this year, and, and you know what kind of a, a challenge that is. Now, um, your, your staff that you had here, you guys have uh, had some impressive uh, places where you've gone on. You talked about that. You, you ended up going to eastern Arizona for a while, but you, you've finished at BYU. Yes. Mike Canales uh, left here. He's been at uh, some big places. He was down at, what, uh, central or southern Florida. He's been in the pro ranks a couple of times. Uh, I mean, he's he's really moved around quite a bit. EJ Caffaro, was he on your staff at all? He was, yeah. And EJ, he went to BYU. Yeah, EJ was with us for five years. And, uh, and then he got a job at Rick's College. <clears throat> he was at Rick's for another... I can't remember how many long. And then when uh, 
Gary Croton came to BYU, he brought EJ in as the academic advisor. That's right. So uh, you, you guys, you, you've had some connections with some coaches that have gone on to do some really pretty good things. Yeah, and you know what? We, we still keep in touch, and we, kind of, we talk, and um, always Snow College comes up, always the great years that we had here and the – the road trips and the laughs and the good <laughs> and the good players and you got to laugh or you cry oh on some gosh, of the road trips. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. It was. Uh, we had the old Sullivan bus and those of you that are listening, remember back in those days it was a old civil Sullivan. It bus. was an old bus even then. Yeah. <laughs> and we had a 15 passenger van and we'd leave Thursday night at midnight and get to Arizona or Arizona Western or wherever it was the next morning and. It was, yeah, there was some good times. <laughs> well, you, we were gone three nights, right? Three nights and three days, and one night was in a hotel. Yes. Two nights was on a bus. Exactly. <laughs> you remember those oh, days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never rode in the Sullivan bus, with, Sullivan bus with the football team. I rode in the 15-passenger van. I thought about uh, saying that last night. There were, there were more than a time or two that I woke up, and I was – I, I was the pillow for <laughs> Alan Salanoa while he was asleep in the 15-passenger yes. van. <laughs> and snoring, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, what a great guy he was, too. Yeah. But, yeah, that was fun last night. And, and you know what's, what else is funny? I mean, the way you spoke of Snow College, and I, I've spoke to Keith a couple of times on the telephone, and, and he really wishes that he almost wishes he would have stayed at Snow College. Yeah. But, but, you know, that that's kind of – the players want to move on to D1. The coaches want to move on to D1. And sometimes you don't realize how good it is. You know, that's, that's so right. And, you know, congratulations to Keith and his family. He did a great job here, not only as an assistant coach, but a head coach. And, you know, he went to USC. He had a stint at USC and a stint at University of Utah. And, and <clears throat> you know, I, I was at two Division I schools, so I was very fortunate to not have to move around too much. But I was at Louisiana Tech for three years and then BYU for – 15 and well 21 but 15 coaching but you know the big the big bright lights and the big fancy bowl games and and all the fancy travel and the equipment and the nike gear and <laughs> it, it's great and it was all awesome experience and i wouldn't trade out byu is where i i wanted to go you know it's my dream school and i was fortunate enough to do it but you come back to these humble beginnings and uh I'll tell you, it's uh, something you never forget. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure in that Division One ranks. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure. You're talking about recruiting every day. Uh, that's a year-round deal, and you're constantly talking about recruiting and kids. And, uh, you know, especially at BYU, what's the fit? You know, what kind of kids can you get in? And um, there's there's some pressure there. And uh, But it was it was a great experience. I can't complain that my career was fantastic. I coached seven years of high school ball, 14 Richfield years. Richfield and North Sandpeak. Yeah, 14 years of junior college ball, and then the rest in the Division One. And, and it was just, I've been very blessed. So I get to meet great people. You know, I talked last night a little bit about relationships, and it's all about the great people that you that come across and the ones that help you get to where you want to go and people that you meet, and it's just been fabulous. Well, you're in Saratoga Springs. That isn't that far away. No. You need to come down a little bit more often. Oh, I will. I'm, All right. I'm serving on the alumni board now. So okay. <laughs> I, will, I will come down more. All right. It's Paul, a special place. Thanks Thanks for joining us. Paul Tidwell, coach of the, the Badgers. And Paul was the, actually the head coach when I first started calling play-by-play. -play. Uh, it seems like 100 years ago. But uh, thanks to Paul, he, he treated me well. He, even in a 15-passenger van, he treated me well. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. All right, we'll be back with more on the Snow College Halftime Show. Get a quality education that's affordable and fun at Snow College. Visit snow.edu. This is Nate Johnson of Risk Managers Insurance Agency in Ephraim. It is surprising how many people do not have any life insurance or adequate coverage today. If you were to suddenly die, would your family have enough money for your funeral and to pay off any debt you may have, or funds to live on with your income no longer available to care for your family? You may be surprised at how low life insurance rates are. Let me sit down with you and discuss how life insurance can benefit you and your family. Call us at Risk Managers in Ephraim, 283-4685. San Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and has grown to be one of the major steel fabricator and erectors in the Intermountain West. 
The management and staff recognizes the dedication and hard work of the Snow College athletic teams and hopes their support assists the athletic programs in continuing their traditions of excellence. San Pete Steel and Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time. Honored to sponsor the Snow Badger Steel Man play of the game. Do you want to make a difference in life? Do you want a college that values you right now? At Snow College, I had opportunities to be hands-on and really make a difference as a freshman in clubs, classes, sports, and student government. At Snow College, I didn't get pushed to the back while I watched the upperclassmen do everything. I was involved right away. Snow College is accepting your application right now. To get more information or schedule a campus visit, go to snow.edu. That's snow.edu. At Snow College, it is all about you. I'm a mom raising four kids, so I know what you're dealing with. Distractions during homework time, faces buried in devices at dinner, not to mention the tug of war to pry devices away from my kids when it's time to go to bed. So I looked everywhere to find a system that could help me with everything I need, a system I can trust. And I found it. It's called CentraGuard by Centricom. You can get started with taking back the internet by visiting centricom.com right now. CentraGuard, better family internet. Welcome back once again to Terry Foot Stadium and Robert L. Stoddard Field. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you at halftime, the Snow College halftime report. Snow College has assembled the best quality, most affordable, and flexible offerings in online education. Visit snow.edu. And taking a look at uh, some of the stats that we've talked about. Snow College with uh, 47 rushing yards in that first half, 48 rushing yards for Garden City. And I think that's a testament to the defensive lines of both of these teams have really been playing strong up front. Kind of interesting, both of them 21 carries for a, almost the same amount of yardage. So, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. But you, you're right, those defensive lines, they've been strong. Both of these teams, uh, you can tell they, uh, they, they hang their hat on in the box defense, you know, that, that defensive line, that second level of the, the linebackers there, uh, just, just not a lot of rushing lanes for either team, only averaging just over two yards per carry. Snow College with the uh, slight edge on passing, 161 yards passing compared to 108 for Garden City. Uh, turnovers has been a, a big factor in this game already. Two interceptions for Snow College. Uh, the, the blocked field goal, uh, huge. Boy, special teams have struggled. The Badgers went down the field on their third possession, I believe it was, against Iowa Western and ended up with a uh, blocked field goal as well. So the Badgers have left some points on the field in the last two games. Well, and you, you mentioned we had Paul Tidwell up here. Badgers have scored in every game since what? Since Paul Tidwell was the coach. I mean, even before Paul Tidwell was the coach. So, yeah. so it was Walt Kreiner that was the head coach in 1984. Okay. They got shut out twice. And uh, at the end of that season, Walt Kreiner, I, I tell this story because Bob Trifal has told it to me a couple of times. He was uh, in the activity center at that time. He says, Walt Kreiner, and I can't remember the other assistant coach, hopped in a Jeep at the end of that season, 1984, and went recruiting. And Paul talked about recruiting D1. Well, JCs have to recruit as well. And they went out and recruited well enough that they won the national I championship see. the very next year. I was going to say, so, so does that mean next year? We're bringing the second national championship back to Ephraim. I would you get, love that. You get shut out one year, you come back the next year. There you go. I, we're gonna we're gonna go with that narrative. How's that? <laughs> we're I, expecting it now. We're expecting it now. That's Anything right. less will be a disappointment <laughs> in 2023. Oh, I don't know if I need to go that far. Uh, Targi Lamson has uh, 14 yards in this game. Rasul Fison eight carries for 28. And Deshaun Cash, three carries for three. He does have that long of 11 that he picked up the first down, which was really key. Yeah, kept kept the drive going, kept that one drive going. They didn't get any points out of it, but, uh, yeah. Any other uh, stats that uh, jump out at you as you're taking a look at that, Greg? No, I, I don't know that Cole Bowers got back in. I'm, I'm wondering I'm wondering that. He's only got one tackle on the day, and uh, and, and he's huge. It's That's big for the, for the defense, for the Badgers. They'll just have to make up – make up for that we'll see if if snow's able to get the ball downfield like they did on that one drive where they got the touchdown if they're able to uh, get Deshaun Cash some time to where he can can get the ball down the field matriculate it down the field as they say sometimes um, and if not yeah, we'll 
<laughs> will the defense maybe put some points on the board? Will the defense pitch a shutout here in the second half? We'll see. All right. We'll take this opportunity for a final timeout. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after this. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. They named it Cache because it was there they would store their goods and come together to trade and connect. The spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. They are Central Utah's financial outfitter. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. Cache Valley and Central Utah are rooted in grand expeditions. Let's keep that heritage alive together. Discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The Snow College Campus Store has something for every member of the family to show their Badger pride. They have hoodies, mugs, car stickers, and more. Online students and parents can get in on the fun too, because now the Campus Store is online at store.snow.edu. Go there now for all of your Snow College apparel needs. Visit store.snow.edu. That's store.snow.edu. T.O. Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of pre-engineered metal buildings of all sizes. Plus, they are your headquarters for custom metal roof and wall panels for your home or business, including all trim and accessories. All of their roof and wall panels are available in several gauges in over 20 different colors. For a free cost estimate or more information, contact T.O. Building Systems in Ephraim, 800-262-5347. That's 800-262-5347. Online at cobuildings.com. My name is Dr. Joel Holman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Central Valley Medical Center, specializing in general orthopedics, which includes sports injuries, total joint replacements, shoulder, hip, and knee, and I'm the only hand surgeon from Provo to St. George. One of the things that I like is that I'm able to take care of people that I've known for most of my life in this area, which I have a fondness for. We treat all orthopedic extremity conditions here at Central Valley Medical Center. We've got a great team, clinic staff, hospital staff, operating crew, and physical therapy services. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you in Ephraim, Utah, on the campus of Snow College. Robert L. Stoddard Field and Terry Foote Stadium at a beautiful fall afternoon. Looking up at the mountains to the east, you've got the uh, aspens, which have turned yellow, and a lot of the uh, oaks, which are kind of starting to fade right now. But there's, there's uh, not many better views, I think, from a stadium than, uh, than this one here at Snow College. Yeah, beautiful, just here at the foot of the Manti LaSalle, you bet. Is Little Caesars a sponsor of ours, Gary? Uh, Little Caesars is the sponsor of the player of the game. Well, we got some halftime Little Caesars, and we appreciate them. So that's, that's probably a good opportunity to, to remind everybody for Fresh Pizza Fast, make a pit stop at Little Caesars in Nephi, Ephraim, and also in Gunnison. We will have the Little Caesars player of the game, and we will have the San Pete Steel Steel Man of the game coming up on the postgame show. The Garden. hoodie, the, the coveted steel man of the game hoodie, <laughs> correct? Yeah, it is correct. I'm trying. Or the I, coveted pizza for player of the game. So as a, as, a, as a poor college student, which do you want? That's the question. Well, do you want a hoodie that'll last for a while or a pizza that'll last maybe one this night? Is, this isn't 40, 50-year-old men deciding this. <laughs> this is 18-year-old kids. So oh, I, yeah. I don't know the answer to this, Gary. <laughs> I know what I would want, but... Yeah, both uh, both are excellent, excellent, excellent. rewards yeah. for the players. We well, appreciate those sponsors. As a teacher, I will tell you what my experience is when a student has the choice of a dollar box of candy or a book. <laughs> a book that could change their life forever or candy that won't last them until they get out of the building. <laughs> Depends it's, on the book. It's always the candy. Depends on the book. Uh, <laughs> Deuce Roberson at the five-yard line to the 15, the 20, mm. has a bit of a hole. Now it collapses, and he gets out to the 29-yard line. Yeah, still a good return out to the 29, but you're right. That, had, that was a hole that looked like Deuce might be able to hit that and take it all the way for six. But still, like you say, 29-yard line, you'll take that all day. Well, now they move it back to the 28-yard line. Yeah, he'll still take it. Yeah, still take it. Three yards more than if you just took a knee in the end zone, right? Yeah, yeah. Take a hit. <laughs> for those three yards, but Targi Lamson and Rasul Fison in the backfield on either side of Deshaun Cash, who has a tight end on the right side of the formation and two wideouts to the left. Handoff to Fison. Fison, small hole, 
and falls forward. Yeah, not much of a hole, but just patient running by Faison there to follow his blockers. You see him put that left hand out and just follow that lead blocker and get, well, they did give him about three yards there, so not too bad, four yards. Badgers go with no huddle, but they look to the sidelines for the play. Play coming in from Barker and Cayman Best, who is going through concussion protocol from last week. Second and seven, a gain of three. Handoff is going to be Fison again. Fison has a bit of a hole, breaks a tackle, turns it upfield, lowers the shoulder, wow. and out of bounds near the 50. As long as the kid doesn't get hurt, man, but Rasheel Fison could have just stepped out of bounds, saved himself the hit, but he's going to run somebody over. The old Walter Payton up the sideline, lower the shoulder, try and deliver some punishment. But good run there. Gets out of that first tackle, as you mentioned, just kind of an arm tackle by Garden City, which we haven't seen a lot of. They've been very sure tacklers. Our today, producer, but. Joe Williams, says he wants the pizza. Sorry to interrupt you, but there, there's, your, <laughs> no, I, I, there's your other feedback. That's the most important thing that we could have figured out there. <laughs> Absolutely. First and 10 at the 48, Targi Lamson. He breaks a tackle. He's inside the 45-yard line. Pile continues to move. They don't blow the whistle. Now they do. And he's down to the 43-yard line, a gain of five. So this, is, this, this drive is maybe establishing that run, some successful runs. One went for four yards, one for, for close to 20 there for Rasheel Faison, and now Targi Lampson, good run on first down. What, they give him about six yards or so, five yards? Yeah. Give him five, it'll be second and five, and again it's Faison and Lampson in the backfield on either side of Deshaun Cash, the quarterback. And off again, Faison. Wanted to go to the right, breaks it, tries to get to the outside to the left, and good defensive play out there. I, I just am <laughs> The numbers are impossible. Oh. They, 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 that yellow, white on yellow jerseys, you know, if you're, if you're listening on the radio, you don't know what we're talking about, but if you're watching here, it's just impossible to see those numbers. I'm going to go with Goodman. Hey, nobody's going to correct you, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Third and five. At the 43-yard line, two wide outs to the right for Snow College. Garden City showing blitz. Now they back up. Cash throws the crossing route in and out of the hands of Bentley, the tight end. Ah. Pretty good coverage out there, though, I think, by uh, Manuel Chavez. Gosh, if you watch that replay again, you see Taylor, slot, Taylor Larson in the slot position, and he kind of ran. It, I think the play was designed to be more of kind of a deep post, but if he, the outside backer that was standing right in front of him blitzed, and if he just would have made that a little bit more shallow and Deshaun Cash could have recognized it, it would have been open for a, for a first down, but Snow's going to go for it. Wow. Fourth and five. And, and Snow's had the ball a couple of times in this position, and they punted and, and drove Garden City all the way back. Cash back to pass, going deep. Got a man out there, Roberson, but he just barely overthrew him. Roberson was wide open. Oh, yeah, you see that snow receiver at the top of the screen jumping up and down because he's wide open there for a first down, but they try to go for the deep ball, and Deuce Roberson was open. It's not a bad idea, just got to deliver it. Just a little more air under that to let Roberson run under it. I think he might have yep. been able to make the play. Yep, yep. So the Badgers turn it over on downs, and... Garden City will take over at their own 43-yard line. Low-scoring affair here in Ephraim. 8-7, the Badgers lead it. That was our halftime score. Garden City with their first possession here of the second half. Man in motion. Friend hands it off to the back in the backfield. Great defensive wow. play out there on the edge. Who is that coming up to make that play? Is that Haynes? Yeah, good Nick open Haynes. field tackle there. Nick Haynes just going high there. Was able to get the the defend the defend running back down, drove him backwards, delivered some punishment as he took him to the ground as well. They're going to give credit to Junior Hemuli on that tackle. A gain of two, but a good tackle in the open space there by Hemuli. Is Bowers back out there? Back to pass. Friend on the crossing route. That's going to be caught. It's going to be short of the first down. It's going to bring up third and two. But Garden City into Badger territory at the 49. Gabe Friend did a great job there to recognize the Badgers were about to blow him up if he wouldn't have got rid of that so quick. So that's an excellent play by him. Handoff now, and that does not get the first Again. down. In fact, that is going to be maybe a gain of a half a yard is all. Multiple times here. Garden City's had third or fourth and short, and Snow College has just stiffened up, not let them get it. We'll see if they're going to go for it here, 
or Four. if they're going to play a field position game. Fourth and one at the 48. They've got to get to the 47 of Snow College. Garden City taking their time here to make the decision. It looks like they're going to go for it. And I think if you're Snow College, you want them going for it. The way your defense has played, and maybe it'll, you know, they could still get it for sure, but we'll see. Man in motion. Friend hands it off to the big fullback, mm -hmm. and he's going to have the first down. Actually, I said fullback. That's Travis Dixon, who uh, just dances behind the line until he finds an opening and then bursts forward for the first down. Another one of those patient runs by Dixon. He's kind of been the, the workhorse back for them today. That's kind of hard to be patient when you know it's fourth down. You just want to go, go reach go, that ball yeah. out and just get it. But, yeah, that's excellent running. That's, that's right, Gary. Dixon with the carry gets the first down. It's at the 45-yard line. Again, man in motion from the slot. Fake to Dixon. Pass back out into the flats, who is the man in motion. And coming over and making the tackle is Zach Nowatsky. Yeah, Zach Nowatsky, good job there by him. But but Nick Haynes really did a good job reading that play. He took a, he took that block away so that Nowatsky could go make the play on that one because that play was designed to go to the one way, sell it to the defense one way, and then throw it back to the other side. But Nick Haynes wasn't fooled at all. Nowatsky is the uh, linebacker on the near side here. No Cole Bowers. Second and nine. Friend hands it off. Good penetration by, was that hey, not Haymuli, excuse me. Vunipola. Vunipola came, came, came through but didn't make the tackle, but at least kind of slowed things up. It's going to be third and six. Yeah, and I think it's Vunipola who's kind of taken the place of Cole Bowers out there at the middle linebacker position. He's made a couple of good plays today. And I think Vunipola actually started as a safety, so that tells oh. you how they've, had to kind of adjust to the injuries on that linebacker core. Third and five, third and six. Friend back to pass under pressure, and he's going to go down. Is that Booney Polo getting I in there? I think it is. So he was pressured by the other linebacker. They brought both of the middle linebackers through those A-gaps, those opposite A-gaps, and the one, Junior Haymuli, was able to get the pressure on it, and then Booney Polo was able to come in after him and clean it up. Big sack, fourth and long. Going to be a punt situation for Garden City. Going back deep to receive is Dawson Tanner for the Badgers. And it is fourth and 12. You see Tanner back there blocking the sun again. The return man for the Badgers. Snap is good, a high short kick. Gonna be fielded by Dawson Tanner, fair catch at the 19. Dawson Tanner, fair catch. Well, they actually move that forward. They might put it at the 20. So if you're the Badgers, you went for it on fourth in Garden City territory. Quit, wasn't able to get it. Gave them really good field position, but it really didn't hurt you too bad. You only gave up about 25 or so yards offensively to Garden City, and you get the ball at the 20. You, you'll take that when you go for it fourth on fourth down from near the 50. Snow's defense. Can you give them all a hoodie? <laughs> can we award? I, I, hey, hey! You're, if you're you turn it over to me, guy. if you turn it over to me, I can give it to whoever I want. You're the one who has to deliver. <laughs> so you, be, you better make the decision today, Gary. All right, I don't have that many hoodies. <laughs> There's the handoff on the fly sweep to uh, Johnson. Johnson breaks a tackle, picks up nine yards. Yeah, and you called that in the in the halftime show. There, you said you wanted to see is it um, Adam Johnson, the speedster. Uh, to, to take that around the outside on that fly sweep, and there they go. They get just short of a first down, brings up second and really short. Badgers again going with an empty backfield and five wide receivers, three left, two to the right. Cash back to pass, going to throw the quick out. It's going to be caught by Roberson. Roberson has the first down as he gets out to the 35-yard line. Yeah, good safe pass there on second and short. You get a lot of options. You get a lot of options as an offensive coordinator on, on what you can do there, and you just throw it out to your sure-handed receiver, pick up that first down. Elijah Irvin and Roberson on the near side of the field. Marquise Montgomery, the wide out to the far side. Hand off to the short side again, Johnson. Johnson ducks inside, then comes to the outside, breaks it to the sidelines, and gets into Garden City territory. He was inches away from taking that to the house. Absolutely. Nice little slow down fake. Make that DN commit inside and then kick it to the outside. And we sit right here next to the offensive coordinators. They're in the next room. There's a wall between us. 
I'm kind of wondering if Gary Chittister may have put his <laughs> ear up there and listened to what the focus is here. I thought he they were listening it. to me. Oh, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Yes. Yes, that's it. First and ten. Cash back to pass. Has time. Goes deep down the sidelines. He's got Elijah Irvin. Makes a one-handed catch, but it's out of bounds. Oh, and you oh my goodness. That's a beauty, but watch in the middle of the Adam field Johnson. here. You have a wide open receiver running a post. Just a skinny post from the slot position. Wide open. Adam Johnson. Yeah. That's who was open. Incomplete. It'll bring up second and ten. And I think the Snow College coaching staff, they were thinking that Elijah Irvin was pushed out of bounds when he went up to get that one. Kind of a... In uh, college, that doesn't matter. Yeah, right. But, uh, but I oh. mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You could carry. I mean, if, you, if a guy goes up to catch it and he leaves his feet, you could pick him up and carry him out of bounds and sit him out of bounds and it's out of bounds. But I think like, before... They oh, were, they thought like he was a pushed PI, out before. Like, gotcha. Yeah, the PI. Gotcha. Second down and 10. Trips to the left. Deshaun Cash on a quarterback keeper. Lowers the shoulder, dives forward. He's got close to the first down. Yeah, this this is interesting, Gary. They've went empty backfield this entire drive. No right. Targi Lampson. Uh, no, you know, no Rasul Faison. Yeah, just going, just deciding to spread out Garden City. Maybe deciding that those linebackers have been able to get into the backfield too much when you're trying to hand it off. So let's spread them out and see what we can do. And Deshaun Cash with a first down run. Again, five wide receivers. Man in motion is Johnson. Johnson gets the handoff. Not much there. And he's going to lose about two yards. Garden City right there. They're saying, okay, you got us a couple of times on that. Not this time. Bryce Butler, 6'5", 295-pound freshman out of Toronto, Canada. We've called, called his, his name a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just a big kid there. This is one of the... And I don't do the away games with you, Gary, so I, I haven't seen Butler, Iowa Western, but this is the team that sizes up with the Badgers best that I've seen all year. Hand off to the inside, Fison. Fison, not much there. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one from there, so a gain of three total, and it'll bring up third and nine. What I was going at with, with there is just the size on that defensive line is really matching up with the offensive yeah. line size for Snow, and we haven't seen that here in Ephraim against the teams Snow's played much this year. I, honestly, this Garden City team looks a lot like the uh, Iowa Western team that the Badgers faced last week. The front four is, is outstanding. Yeah. Third and nine for Snow. Fison in the backfield with Deshaun Cash. Two wideouts left, two wideouts right. Cash going the deep out. Got a man there at the 25, and it should be enough for a first down. Oh, they're going to be Roberson close. again. Yeah, they're marking it. They're moving that. Look at that offensive line setting up the pocket again. Like I said, in the first quarter, I was hard on that offensive line, but they've done a great job since then. Deshaun Cash has time to throw just over the tippy tip, tip the tips of the hands of the defender to get a first down. First and 10 at the 25. Fison again in the backfield with Cash. Two wideouts left, two wideouts right. It's Elijah Irvin and Deuce Roberson. Roberson in the slot to the right. On the far side, it's Taylor Larson and Marquise Montgomery. Again, the quarterback draw. This time, Deshaun gets drilled hard. And that looks like Deshaun Williams. Yeah, you see that's that's that was a on the tackle. Yeah, that was a, a linebacker blitz from that outside linebacker or even kind of a Almost a nickel type position, it looked like, but clear far from the outside and just unimpeded straight to the quarterback. He had a he had a lead blocker there, the running back, but there was just there was there was nobody picking up that blitz. Garden City shows blitz again. The Badgers back out and look to the sidelines for the play call coming in from the sidelines. Second and twelve. Cash has time. Throws just before he gets hit for Roberson and just over the top of Roberson again. Boy, he's had Roberson open twice now yeah. and just cannot get enough air under it for Roberson to mm. run under it. Yeah, just just if Roberson was three inches taller, that would have been <laughs> perfect. But another outside linebacker blitz, and Deshaun Cash is lucky he got it rid of it when he did. Oh, yeah. If he would have held that another split second, that would have been probably a, like a fumble or at least he would have been sacked. Third and 12, big third down here for the Badgers as they've been able to move down the field, but now starting to stall out. Cash, got a man open, Roberson. Roberson has to get to the 15, and he doesn't do it. Oh, he's just Just close. a yard short, I think. Oh, no, well, they're moving wow, it. Wow, where wow. they moved it. 
Wow. I thought he was short of the 10 or the 15, but they put it on the 15, and he gets the first down. Great pass by Deshaun Cash, and who is his favorite receiver now? He's no kidding. Deuce Roberson is, is the guy today. Absolutely. Roberson out of this slot on the same side as Elijah Irvin. Garden City pointing at the Badgers, but they haven't set yet. Now Rasul Fison moves to the left, gets the handoff, breaks a tackle, falls forward, picks up maybe four down to the 11-yard line. I want to watch this replay to see if that was, no, yeah, I think that's the right decision. I was wondering if Deshaun should have kept that, but there was a spy out there, an outside linebacker out there watching him. If he would have kept that, he would have probably not even got as much as, as uh, Fison got. Second down and six. Man in motion is Roberson, handoff to Roberson. Roberson on the fly sweep, mm. straight arm, not much there. Great job by Garden City to just keep stretching that out and forcing it to the sidelines, no gain. Yeah, that's what you want to do on those sweeps like that. You just, if you can't step up and make a tackle, just make it, make that that offensive player just keep stretching it, stretching it, stretching it, and then use that sideline as, as your 12th defender on the field. And uh, Deuce just kept hoping that he could break that and get one guy to buy on an inside juke, and none of them did. That'll bring up third down. Another big third down here for Snow College. I hate to say they're in field goal range because the Badgers have struggled with the field goal. Yeah. They had the first one attempted last week blocked, and the first one this week is also blocked. So third down. Hand off to Fison. Fison breaks a tackle, spins, tries to get that first down. He's inside the five. I think he's got it. Yep. What an effort by Rasul Fison. Just keeps moving those legs. Look at this. Gets hit right there at the line of scrimmage. Stumbles. Stumbles. Bumbles. <laughs> Somebody grabs his T-shirt. Wow. wow. And just an effort by Rasul Fison. Give it to him again. Don't you reward the running back that makes an effort like that? Absolutely. I agree with you there, Gary. Targi's back in for Snow College. So you got two men in the backfield with Deshaun Cash. Cash. Runs a shovel pass to Targi Lampson. Wow. I have never seen the Badgers run that. And Garden City sniffed that out and made a great play. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that kind of that triple, that newfangled triple option you see a lot in college where you've got one guy going to the outside. The quarterback can keep it themselves. And the, the, the third option is that little shovel pass right in front. And a lot of times that, that fools teams, but Garden City wasn't fooled at all. So second down and goal from the four-yard line. Brad, Badgers come back with uh, Bentley at the tight end position. Bentley goes in motion, handoff to Rasul. Rasul finds a little bit of an opening and gets down to the three, but we do have a flag on the play. And it's going to be offsides against Garden City. Wow, that's big, yeah. If, if I'm Snow, I... If I'm inside the three-yard line and it's second or third down, there's, I'm just running it. Yeah. Not getting cute at all. So that's going to move it to the two, right? We were at the – Snow was at the four, move it to the two, half the distance, and still second down. Targi Lampson back in. Targi now kind of that little wing position. And now he moves as well as Bentley over to the left side. Cash under center, hands it off to Fison. Fison tries to find a hole, and he's going to lose a yard, it looks like. Wow. Or back to the original line of scrimmage is all. Man, both of you, these defensive lines are so fired up. And you talk about not getting cute. That almost was getting cute. <laughs> I know it was a running play, but you haven't had Deshaun Cash under center all game. Yeah. yeah and that's, now, you, that's now you put him under center. That's true. I think a lot of games, Snow College can just rely on that offensive line to lean forward and get two yards. And this one, it, it hasn't happened yet. We'll see that deep back again under center cash. Man in motion again. Badgers are going to roll out to the right, throw it into the end zone, and that was way overthrown. That wasn't even close. Deshaun knows it. And now, do you try a field goal that you haven't had success with? I, I, do you try to no, run no. it in? Yeah, I, I don't. 
it's there's a, there's a there's a football rule I've read and I can't remember who it is. I don't remember if it was General Neyland there in Tennessee and they're they're going to kick the field goal. No, I don't they're not. Oh, oh, they're just bringing wholesale. They're just okay. bringing in a whole the, the, bunch of new offensive players. A football rule that I've heard is never kick a disappointing field goal. <laughs> I like that quote. Here you go. Yeah. Well, Garden Two City line. did the same thing. And now a timeout is going to be taken by Garden City. Now, and I, you probably won't take this break here. With 30 seconds left here in the third quarter, the lack of scoring. If you're tied up 7-7, absolutely kick that thing. But if you're snowing, you're up 8-7. Yeah, I, th I think you go for it. All right. We're going to take a Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Why do people everywhere love my style checking? It has rewards you'll flip for. I love my travel rebates! With my style, the spotlight's always on me. We can send money with Zelle. Good boy. For me, it's instant issue debit cards. Find out why people everywhere love my style checking from Mountain America at macu.com. Okay, so welcome back. I just found out on a 30-second break, you don't really have time to take a bite of a Little Caesars pizza. <laughs> I took one. I took a very small bite. <laughs> I had to get that piece of pepperoni, so mine was a little bit too big. All right, how big is it? Fourth down and goal from the two-yard line. Badgers have Taylor Larson, Marquise Montgomery split wide to the left. They've got Adam Johnson in the slot, Deuce Roberson in the slot, and Elijah Irvin wide right. Empty backfield. Wow. Man in motion is Johnson. Johnson fakes the handoff and trying to get into the end zone is Deshaun Cash. He does not do it. What a defensive effort by Garden City to stop the Badgers at the one. Yeah, Deshaun thought he could, and he was so close there, and he just gets thrown back. I'm trying to get a number here. Is it zero? I think that's zero. Yeah, uh, he's Raymond been, Cuts. Yeah, he's been in there all game long. Raymond Cuts from the Bronx Busters, Orlando, Florida. Coming to Garden City, Kansas, a big trip there. <laughs> uh, they've, I'll tell you, Garden City, they get a ton of kids from Florida, and he just made a huge play there at the half-yard line. I don't know if we probably can't see that replay again. We, we're we're too, too into this next play. One of the linemen for Snow College, it was a pulling, pulling guy from the right side, goes through the line, and I think he just thought that he had to go get that next level. If he would have just picked up that defensive lineman, Deshaun would have walked in. Hand off in the backfield, falling forward for a gain of two. So it's out not to the three. It's not three points, but you still could get two points here if you're the Badgers. Well, hand off that time to uh, Travis Dixon and Dixon. Dixon's a powerful runner. Yeah. And he just lowered the shoulder and picked up two yards. Yep. Just trying to get out of the out of the shadow of that goal line into the third quarter here. End of the third quarter, we are still eight seven. Snow College with the lead. We'll be back in sixty seconds. This is Nate Johnson of Risk Managers Insurance Agency in Ephraim. It is surprising how many people do not have any life insurance or adequate coverage today. If you were to suddenly die, would your family have enough money for your funeral and to pay off any debt you may have, or funds to live on with your income no longer available to care for your family? You may be surprised at how low life insurance rates are. Let me sit down with you and discuss how life insurance can benefit you and your family. Call us at Risk Managers in Ephraim, 283-4685. Do you want to make a difference in life? Do you want a college that values you right now? At Snow College, I had opportunities to be hands-on and really make a difference as a freshman in clubs, classes, sports, and student government. At Snow College, I didn't get pushed to the back while I watched the upperclassmen do everything. I was involved right away. Snow College is accepting your application right now. To get more information or schedule a campus visit, go to snow.edu. That's snow.edu. At Snow College, it is all about you. Welcome back to Terry Foot Stadium, Robert L. Stoddard Field on the campus of Snow College in Ephraim, Utah. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you. Garden City with the ball at their own three yard line. Second and eight as we get set to start the fourth quarter, Greg. Here we go. See if the Badgers can get two points here. Or at least at least a three and out for Garden City. 60 seconds was long enough to take a bite of pizza, by the way, <laughs> in case anybody's keeping track. Hand off. And barely getting out of the end zone. Ball is loose. The ball is loose. 
And I haven't seen a signal yet. Snow College says they have it. But I have not seen a signal from hey. what's important, and yep. that's the referee. And they do. They say Badger ball. Well, Badgers are still saying that, I still. That one official came up and pointed really? to Snow, yeah. I still have yeah, not right seen right there, the, the white hat just pointed. Yep, the white hat just pointed Snow's way. Really, because number 72, Jabari Dawkins actually came up with the ball. Yeah, they're switching. That Snow is, College, forget is, two points. How big is that? Oh, I mean, Jabari Dawkins comes up with the ball, but that's in a scrum. I, I get yeah, it. They but obviously still. saw something there. Yeah, so the Badgers come up with the ball. Wow. Get three downs from the th or four downs from the three yard line to try and make this a what a fifteen to seven game. I was going to say a two score game, but uh, at least an eight point. Yeah, defense recovered the ball. The the white hat just said. So the Badgers have it. As Greg mentioned, at the three yard line. Cash has Targi Lamson and Rasul Fison in the backfield. Hand off to Targi. Targi, hole, and Targi's in the end zone. Runs over a Bronk Buster to get into the end zone that time. Targi Lamson wasn't going to be denied. Put six on the board for the Badgers to go up 14-7. You kick this, you get up eight points in a, in a low, low-scoring game. That's huge. Oh, and now a flag's coming in late. What, what in the world is that? Well, Coach McFall's not too happy. Is it going to take the, it, it won't take the no, points off the it, board, but it's going to make this extra point from, instead of the 10, it'll be. Can Joe, can Joe, can we run the replay? Is it too far? Can we, if there's a chance we can run that replay, it's, it's as they're coming off the field. So I don't know if one of the snow players was talking to one of the Brock Bunsters, but it's clear out here by the numbers so or if maybe somebody said something to one of the officials i know the coaching staff for snow aren't isn't they're not mad at the officials here they're mad at their players right here comes the call from the referee so the penalty be will, will be assessed on the kickoff yeah, which and hurts. The, the Badgers lining up in this wacky formation once again with all their linemen far to the left, only the center to the right. We're calling this for the radio. Now they adjust a little bit closer, but they're still out to the left. There's the yep. snap. Hand off to the tight end. Yeah, He's two in more. the end zone. Two more point conversion. Okay, let's describe this for you folks on you, the radio. You, you do it. Okay, you see the snap in football from the center that always goes between his legs back to the quarterback. There's no rule that you have to go between the legs. It's just the most efficient way so you can stand up and block. You can turn around and hand it to the running back or to the quarterback. You can toss it back to him if you want to as a center. And that's just what you saw right there. The center lines up with it between his legs, stands up, tosses it back to the to the running back that's behind the line that's maybe what five yards to the left of where the, the ball is being snapped. Is that a is that yeah. sound right, yeah. Gary? You just toss it back there. That running back, and in this case it was a tight end, just covers it up, follows those five guys, and just falls into the end zone if he has to. But he, he stayed on his feet this time. But, yeah, Ethan Wood gets in for those two points, makes it a two-score game. Huge, 16-7. to seven. Well, if you can't kick a field goal, stands the reason you can't kick an extra point, go for the two. It's, and, it's, and, and I know this is for local fans only. Manti might want to look at that. Gary, I, I'm just Gary, saying, I, uh, no, no, Manti you, has struggled. I mean, it's no secret. I'm not picking on anybody. No, I'm just no. saying they've struggled. They might want to look at something the like this. The only reason I breathed and didn't say anything <laughs> is because in the last game that I called on a Manti nor Sampi game, I didn't breathe before talking <laughs> and, and kind of got a little upset at the PAT team of the Manti Templars for our local fans, as you mentioned. So I'm not going to do that here. But, okay. But you're right. Yeah. And Fred, I saw Coach Fred talk Yahoo here for the Templars, so we'll see if he maybe takes takes notes. Ball is uh, bobbled on the kick return, but getting to the outside and going down short of the 30, a lot of stuff out on the sidelines. Yeah, and now no, See, and that flag comes in. That better not be on the tackle. That's a kid just running through. Watch this replay here. <coughs> the Badger kickoff team, he's just running through that tackle. There's nothing more he can do here. You can't make a kid let up. Look at this. He's not aggressively taking him down. He just starts that tackle, and it goes out of bounds. If that's what the penalty is on, I think that's wrong. Now, if there's extra stuff that I didn't see, no they're, foul. They're waving on the it off. All right. Uh, 
So I'm not going to say what I saw then because there's no penalty at all. So Garden City. <laughs> Did you City, disagree with me? No, no, no. no I agreed Just with you. Just you saw extra I saw stuff. something else. Okay, all right. So it'll be at the 28-yard line, own 28-yard line for Garden City. The Bronkbusters will have the ball. So the fumble gives the Badgers a short field, and the Badgers are able to convert. And now lead 16-7. to seven. First and 10. Friend at quarterback. Back to pass. Looks. Goes down the sidelines. Got a man out there. Incomplete. Just overthrew the intended receiver. The safety was making a, a break on that play, but a little bit late was Lua Powell. I don't know if we see this replay. I've said that multiple times. Sorry. But, but on the outside, you had two routes going out there. You had one stop a little curl route, and then one that went long. The curl route was wide open because all of the defenders went with that long, uh, with the, the, the deep pass. And you see the coaching staff and that curl route receiver looking over his quarterback saying, hey, you know, we got what we <laughs> wanted here, but they didn't take it. Second and 10. They shift, and an offensive lineman moves. <laughs> the tight end went in motion because they had him on the wrong side, and uh, big Frederick Pelling made a move upfield. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think the offensive line thought when that tight end moved, tight end got up to shift as you mentioned Gary that that was the start of the, the play. The play being started. Yeah, and yeah it, it wasn't. Tough break for the Bronkbusters there as the penalty puts them behind the sticks second and 15. Moves it back to the 23-yard line. Three wide out, split wide to the right, and the halfback is to the right as well. Badgers come on a blitz. Pass over the middle is caught. Oh, my goodness. Holding Baby. on. Or do they say, did he hold on to oh, it? Oh, no, he got it. But, yeah. oh, my goodness, watch this replay. That is a hit. Oh, did they say he dropped it? I think they said he dropped it. My did not gosh. Have my goodness, there's been a couple of hits by the Badgers today <laughs> that broke up passes that would have been complete gigantic hit. Who was that that got the hit? I think that was uh, Paola. Paola. Oh, I was trying to listen He's to the, the PA announcer to see who they gave that hit to. I think it's Lua Paola. Ooh, boy. So third down and 15. Back to pass. His friend passes a short pass, and that's not even going to be close to enough for the first down. Ajo So. Makes the tackle right after the catch. It'll bring up fourth. Man, I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, you've got two receivers out there, a short route and a longer route, and just the wrong decision again by the quarterback. He should have went with that longer, kind of a little bit of a post corner going on the outside, and it was it was open. That would have got enough for a first down, most likely for the Bronc Busters, and he went off to the sideline pretty upset, that receiver did. So a punting situation here on fourth, and we'll call it 13. Back to receive is Dawson Tanner. He will not have the sun in his eyes this time. He's made two great yeah. catches, hasn't he? I mean, yeah. you don't really talk about that too much, but with the sun in his eyes, this is a low kick, and it takes a badger bounce and goes out of bounds near the 49-yard line. Usually a low kick like that, you see it take off and run, but this one backed up. Yeah, yeah, you don't usually see it take that backwards hop like that. You, like you mentioned, Gary's true. So, but Snow's going to have it in Bronk Buster territory, trying to make this a three-score game possibly with 13-23 left in this one. Six. Well, the offense has put some yards up, not a lot of points. This is the lowest scoring game we've had of the year. Yeah. But at least the Badgers have gotten it in the end zone after being shut out last week at Iowa Western. Yeah, one of the stats I was going to mention, uh, Drayson Ball does a great job, the, the sports information director here at Snow College, and he gives us a bunch of stats, a kind of an interesting one under Coach Erickson, scoring 30-plus points. The Badgers are 17-0. and Wow. Hand off to Rasul Fison. Not much there, but he breaks it at the wow. outside. How did he not go down? Does a tightrope down the sidelines, but he does get, does get marked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. I thought he was down, and he came out of nowhere. Yeah, just kept those legs churning on that right side. Garden City looked like they thought he was down. Huge play there. Badgers inside the 25-yard line to the 24. Fison and Lamson will be in the backfield on either side of Deshaun Cash. Cash started not very good, throwing two interceptions on his first two passes, but he has, knock on wood, looked good since then. 
Handoff to Fison again. This is a flag on the play. Fison to the sidelines, out of bounds after a gain of four. Where they didn't stop the play, this could be illegal motion, could be offsides. And it is offsides against Garden City. I think you take the penalty, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it looked like the run was about similar Four. to where the f yeah the yardage would be. So save Sa that save down. Save the down. Yep. I think you mentioned <laughs> Snow Girls, Snow Women's Soccer Team yes. played today, right, Gary? Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. The Badgers uh, able to knock off Salt Lake. Salt Lake is number two or three in the nation. Wow. And uh, Snow College with a big win there for for the Lady Badgers. Another one for our local listeners in the playoffs, Manti girls soccer as well. Beat Carbon today, the five versus four seed. Manti got the upset, three that's, to zero. That's terrific. On the road. Yep, over up in, in price. price, yeah. They'll move on to play RSL Academy, which is a tough, tough game for those for the Templars. Well, I think they're professionals, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. I, I mean, seriously. I mean, don't they recruit for that and everything? I'm, I'm not trying I, to. No, no, you're right. Yeah. It, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, the Badgers give those yards right back again on the illegal procedure. Is going to move it right back. We've had that happen four or five times this year on the games that we've done together yep. where one team will get a, an offside, one team right, not even the next play, the same play, they <laughs> give, give it right back the other way. So it's first and 10 from the 24-yard line. The Badgers were in the red zone for just a brief second. <laughs> Cash with Targi. And Fison. Fison gets the handoff. Starts to the left. Comes back to the right. Lowers the shoulder. Keeps the feet moving again. He's inside the 20 to the 19. You know, I don't. I, I, I obviously I don't know this, but uh, I don't know how often Garden City plays at 5,500 feet. And just the difference between the way their D-line played against the Snow College offensive line and the run game, especially in, in the, the first, first half, yeah. as as opposed to now. It makes you wonder if that elevation does something. You know, I I don't think they play at this elevation very often, if at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably never. <laughs> Second and five, handoff to Fison again. Fison stays behind the blockers, tries to find an opening, and he's going to lose a yard, maybe two. And those big guys on the defensive Just line. Just as you say that. Yeah, the big guys on the defensive line, line said, we yeah, take this elevation, Hershul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's your elevation right here, right. Mr. Sterner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and they've done a good job of, of subbing in and out. They've they've played yeah. they've they've played a, a few different players on that defensive line. Yeah. Probably ought to mention some of them: Bryce Butler, Deshaun Williams, P.S. Ojugo. Big third down here for the Badgers. Now outside of the red zone. In motion is Roberson. Roberson gets the handoff. Has a block in front of him. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. He's to the five. What a run. And, and I got to give credit here. Rasul Fison did a great block on that outside. Yeah, yeah. And Deuce Roberson just letting those blocks develop and then turning on the Jets and enough for a first down. I, I wondered right when that play started to develop whether the short side of the field sweep was the right thing, and it obviously was. <laughs> Well, Rasul Fison kicked out a block out, gave uh, Roberson a, a, a path on the inside a little bit. Now Rasul gets the handoff, and Rasul is going to make it inside the five to the four. It'll be second and goal. Badgers with some subs coming in. Targi Lamson's going to come back in. Deuce Roberson comes out. Taylor Larson comes out. Second and goal from the five. Marquise Montgomery wide to the left. Davis split wide to the right for Snow. Cash hands it off to Fison. Fison trying to find an opening. Gets to the one and then pushed back by Garden City. Yeah, just fighting for that end zone. Running clock if you're the Badgers. That's important. Now down. It'll, they'll snap this one under nine minutes with a nine-point lead here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Rashul, I, I would assume he will get this ball again. Maybe Targi will, will get to cap off another another drive. <laughs> we'll see. Rashul looking for that first time into the end zone today. Trying to get in that Mountain America end zone, Mountain America Credit Union end zone, Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward with affordable financial services. And expert advice. Details at macu.com. 
High snap, but a handoff to Targi. Targi's in the end zone touchdown, but a flag on the play. It's on this near sideline. Where they didn't stop the play, I'm not sure. It's out here with Marquise Montgomery. Yeah, so it's either it's either an offside. Do you have too many in the backfield? Touchdown. Offsides is, is the call. So the Badgers get the touchdown, a one-yard run by Targi Lamson. I'll tell you, this, this game has turned out, you know, obviously in favor of the Badgers so far here with eight minutes, just over eight minutes left in this one, but it didn't look like this to start. And the Badgers have done a good job to stay with it and uh, go up three scores now. And now they're lining up in that funny formation again. Now this time they do have somebody split wide to the right. And now they're going to come all the way in. More traditional More PAT. traditional PAT here yeah. coming up. Snap is good. Placement's good. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And the Badgers do get a one-point conversion here on the PAT. And Snow College now leads it 23-7. to We'll take this opportunity for a timeout after the Badgers get into the Mountain America Credit Union end zone. Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward with affordable financial services. Details available at macu.com. Little Caesars of Ephraim and Nephi have expanded to a third location in Gunnison, inside Gunnison Sinclair. Hours Monday to Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Come enjoy classics like crazy bread, cheese, pepperoni, and three meat treat pizzas. Little Caesars also offers wings, dip, soda, and an awesome family meal deal, including two liters of soda, pepperoni or cheese pizza, and a crazy combo for just $9.99. Come enjoy one of the best deals in America. Little Caesars, Ephraim, Nephi, and Gunnison. Welcome back to Snow College. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you as the Badgers were able to get into the Mountain America Credit Union end zone, a one-yard run by Targi Lamson. The point after was good. And checking the Central Valley Medical Center scoreboard now, Snow College leads it 23-7. to Central Valley Medical Center, from orthopedics to pediatrics, you can trust CVMC. Call 435-623-3200. Very high end over end kick is going to be taken at about the seven yard line to the 20 and getting across the 25 yard line and finally taken down on the return. Singleton? Yeah, Martel, Martel Singleton. Singleton. <clears throat> Lubbock, Texas. Martel Singleton, like we mentioned, a lot of Texas, a lot of, a lot of Florida to high school football hotbeds. For sure, and uh, the Bronx Busters, Garden City, they do a good job recruiting those areas. As you mentioned, they do a good job bringing those kids maybe that start D1, want to maybe change what they're doing, come back down to this level, and then trying to get back to D1. High snap, back to pass is uh, Perry, who's back into the ball game at quarterback. Ty Perry back in, and the pass is too high. It'll be incomplete and bring up a second down. Now that I don't see too often. John Talmoa Payow calming down one of his defensive players. <laughs> He's usually the one that's all fired up, but uh, good to see that. That's, that's maturity of a player of John Talmoa Payow's caliber and, and trying to be a calming defense out there. You don't have Cole Bowers, who, who really has been one of the keys on that defense. Second down and 10. Handoff. And breaking tackles, this is a foot race, getting into Badger territory. On the carry, Ajo So with the tackle. And now we have an injury on yeah, the, that, the ball that, carry. That I, looked pretty rough when he hit the ground. I wonder if that head kind of bounced off the ground. The, the running back, I'm trying to get the number. That, was it 26? I think it's Freeman. Okay. Fre Freeman's listed as a running back. Uh, and Ajo So brings him down, yeah, and that head... Just yeah, bounced. His, yeah, yeah, and you hate to see that. Ojo So just doing what he had to do to, to get a man to the ground. Well, Freeman, <laughs> I mean, he broke some tackles, and it, it looked like he was headed 
home. Yeah, and he's a powerful runner. You can tell that. You got to, when a defensive back comes up to hit him, you want to, you want to bring him down as hard as you can. And that time, like you say, his head just unprotected and just hit that ground really violently. We'll take this opportunity for a, another Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. Utah Heritage Credit Union is available for your services for auto, ATV, mortgage, and new home construction loans. For more information, contact Utah Heritage Credit Union in Mount Pleasant, Ephraim, Moroni, and Gunnison. Proud to be a Snow College sponsor. We'll be back after this. San Pete Steel in Moroni was founded in 1994 and is one of the major steel construction companies in the Intermountain West specializing in structural steel fabrication and erection. San Pete Steel's impressive portfolio includes the Hale Theater in Sandy and structures on the campuses of the University of Utah, BYU, and UVU. San Pete Steel in Moroni, where their motto is done right and on time at 685 East Main in Moroni. Call 800-261-1026, 800-261-1026, or sampetesteel.com. Garden City trying to answer in Badger territory at the 40-yard line. Perry hands it off, finding a bit of an opening on the carry is Hodges. And Hodges is going to pick up six yards to the 34-yard line. Some of the best runs of the day for the yeah. Bronc Busters here these last couple of plays. So Hodges now in the backfield, along with Perry at quarterback. Perry keeps it himself, finds an opening. He read that beautifully, and he's going to get inside the Badger 25-yard line down to the 23 Nice run by Perry. Yeah, did a great job of reading that defensive end and keeping it because that running back would have lost four or five yards if he would have handed it off. So good job by, uh, good job by the quarterback, uh, Perry. Ty Perry. Ty Perry back in at quarterback. Hodges, the running back, to his right. Two wide outs to the right, two wide outs to the left. And I say wide, and it's a relative term. Now in motion. Perry back to pass, looks to the right. Got a man out there, the running back out of the backfield. Just too long and incomplete. Tried to make a diving catch that time, did the running back coming out of the backfield. but And he, he had a step on the defender. That would have been six if he could have put it on him. Vuni Pola out there defensively against the running back. It'll bring up second and ten. Garden City started this drive at their own 26-yard line. A reminder, the Badgers will be on the road next week, and the game will be on Friday afternoon as they take on Air Force Prep. We'll have the game for you on KMTI, and hopefully we will be able to live stream it as well. Second and 10. Back to pass is Perry. Under some pressure, passes out in the flats, and that's going to lose yardage or maybe just gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it looked like a loss of one. It was a good job by the corner out there for the Badgers to just read that. Step up, make an open, open field tackle, leading the Bronc Buster player out of bounds. It's going to be a loss of two. It'll bring up third and 12. Got to be four down territory here. You're down to seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter and trailing 23 to seven. Not in a hurry, though. No. Garden City isn't in too big of a hurry. Well, you got to get this first one to even have a chance at the second one. So mm -hmm. you don't want to go too fast sure. and make a, make a mistake, I think. that's Yeah, in, that makes sense, yeah. That's in my humble opinion. Perry, play action, under some pressure, gets away from the defense, throws it to the wide open tight end, who's got it inside the five. The Badgers trying to strip the ball, and he gets into the end zone. Instead of making a tackle, the Badgers try to strip the ball, and Garden City comes up with a huge play, 26-yard yeah. pass play. Yeah, what a big play. It w almost was a sack for a loss of about 10 yards, and the quarterback was able just to, to roll out, get outside the grasp of, was it Ta Tamua Payao out there chasing I think it after was. him? Yeah, and hit, hit his tight end. And if you watch this, what Gary was, no, that's the last play. So what, what Gary's talking about, if you make the tackle at about the five-yard line, now, Garden City still might get in, but do they take another minute off the clock, get right. it down to five and a half or five minutes? But as it is, they tried to re strip the ball and weren't able to, and six for Garden City. Two-point conversion coming up. Perry, pass, got a man open, and he's not going to make it. Great defensive effort out there by Bostros Alessandro. So that keeps it a two-score game. So it was 23-13. You're going for two to try to make it an eight-point game, keep yourself in it for just a one one possession, but it looks like there is a penalty out here. Yeah, there is. 
But I you said Postros Alessandro did a great job to keep the receiver out of the end zone. He caught it at about, what, about the one-yard line or so, and Bostros drove him back. But let's see what we got here. I think it's going to go against Snow because nobody's running. After the play. Oh. So after the play, I think that went against Garden City. I couldn't hear who, who they called it on, but, yeah, so that's – Wow. Keeps the score 10 points. 23-13 is your score with six minutes and 38 seconds remaining in this contest. We'll be back with the kickoff after this. Are you looking for a TV experience that you'll love? Then listen up. Mantitel has partnered with Philo to bring you over 50 channels of live and on-demand TV. Stream your favorite shows from networks like Hallmark, Discovery, Nickelodeon, and more. The best part is Philo gives you over 50 channels with unlimited recording on all of your devices so you can watch what you want, when you want, for only $20 a month. To sign up, go to go.philo.com slash mtcc. That's go.philo dot com slash mtcc. Man Titel, connecting your life since 1907. Fans team out there, don't you? Yeah. Yep. Welcome back as we get set for the kickoff. So to let you know what happened, we had an unsportsmanlike conduct against the Badgers after the two-point conversion failed. So Garden City is going to kick it off from the 50-yard line. And with six minutes and a, six and a half remaining, you're down two. Onside two kick scores. here. Yeah. Two scores. Down two scores. Down two 10 scores. points, 23-13. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a definite onside kick here. And, Gary, right when we came back, you heard Gary say, got to have the hands team. And you see Taylor Larson coming in, and that's, that's a hands team for you right there. And here comes the onside kick. It takes a nice high bounce, oh. but nobody goes to get it. Two Badgers decided the other guy was going to get it. Isn't that what happened? That's totally what happened. I, I mean, it, went they, out of, it went out of bounds, so it's going to yeah. be the Badger ball here for, for our <laughs> folks on the radio. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But yeah, if you watch this replay, two right in between two snow players, and wow. they just both of them let it go. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's Somebody's got to say, I want this. Yeah, just, just kind of averted dis disaster that time for the, <laughs> for the Badgers. Garden City was this close. Yeah to coming up with uh, the loose ball. So Snow will have it at the 35-yard line. Time is uh, going to be a factor here shortly. Badgers need to pick up some first downs. I'm not going to put the pressure on you yet because we're not that close. I, I love to have Greg figure out how many times you got to get a oh, first down right, right. before you can start kneeling. Yeah. Way too it, much time. Way too much time. Yeah, six and a half minutes, and Garden City has two timeouts remaining. Yeah. But, but I, I think if you're the Badgers, you at least these first first two downs, I think you'll see uh, – I don't think you'll see him put it in the air. Targi Lamson, Rasul Fison in the backfield. Hand off to Targi. Targi has a small hole and gets a gain of four out to the 39-yard line. And positive yards, that's what, that's what Snow is looking at. Get positive yards every down here. Garden City, got to come up with a stop here to give your offense a chance to uh, to get at least one more score and then start thinking about the second one. Yeah, if you can get a three and out, even if they're all three runs, if you're Garden City, you're still going to have four, you know, four and a half, 445 or so when See, you get and, the ball And that's back. what I'm saying. That's that's where you're saying. You, you already know how much, <laughs> how time. much time. Yeah. 40-second play clock. Yep. <laughs> Roberson in the slot. Marquise Montgomery wide to the right. Low snap. Hand off to Targi. Targi has a hole. Targi, it's a foot race, and they catch him from behind. Coming up with the yeah, uh, big play flags. is Manuel Chavez. Yeah, and that flag comes in. He had Targi out of bounds and kept kept throwing him down, and he's the one that gets hurt here, is uh, the tackler for Garden City. But he brought Targi down out of bounds, so it's going to add 15 more yards to this run. And unfortunately, Chavez pulled Lamson onto himself, and that's he's kind of shaken up, but he'll go off the field. So they mark him out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Earlier, we talked about, about the Badgers finishing a tackle out of bounds. This one was a little bit different. You had, you had Chavez had Targi Lampson by the shirt, by the jersey, took him out of bounds, and then a step or two later still makes that action to throw him down, which is why the flag comes in. So the officials trying to figure things out here. Again, a, a reminder for uh, Snow fans, the ladies' soccer team was victorious over S Salt Lake Community College, 4-2. to two. 
Oh, they're calling it a horse, horse collar. collar. I don't oh. agree with that. He yeah, had no, the jersey. You, yeah, you're supposed to have the pads to have that horse collar. You can, I think you can grab the, the back of the jersey. I, I agree. Let's watch this replay here. I, he's obviously got the jersey because it pulled him. Mm, but, I don't know. Anyway. All right. But yeah. So the Badgers get it down to the 23-yard line after all is said and done. 23? Shouldn't that... Wasn't that a 15-yard penalty? Are they calling that at the 38? Well, I, I think, yeah, I think he was out of bounds at the 38. Clear back here? Yeah. That looked like it was clear down at the 30. I, I, wow. Well, and maybe. He, the tackle was made clear down by the 25. Yeah. Huh. Maybe maybe he stepped out earlier than we I, could see from That's here. what I think, yeah. yeah. So first and 10, handoff, Targi Lamson again. Not much there, but Targi lowers the shoulder, falls forward to the 21-yard line, a gain of two. So a little uh, promo here for all of the Snow College teams. The volleyball teams ranked in the top 10. In fact, three teams from the Scenic West Athletic Conference in the top 10 in volleyball. You've got Salt Lake Community College, USU Eastern, and Snow College, all in the top three, uh, top five, 10, 10, sorry. You've got the men's soccer team in the top 15, and you've got the women's soccer team in the top 10, and they just knocked off the number two team, I believe, Salt Lake Community College. Football, second and eight here from the 21-yard line. Snow running a lot of clock here. Hand off to Fison. Fison finds a bit of a hole, gets inside the 20, marking down at the 19. More importantly, clock continues to run here. So Rashul Fison now has over 110 yards. I think this will this will get him up to about 111 yards, averaging about five yards a carry. Targi Lampson now over 50 yards as well. And as I mentioned earlier, under Coach Erickson, when Snow College has a 100-yard rusher, 10 and one wow. on the year, looking looking pretty confident they'll they'll move this to 11 and one. And again, it's Targi and Rasul in the backfield. Badgers letting the play clock count down. It's down to 12. And they'll snap this right around five, I think. Cash, play action. Looked like he wanted to hand it off. Now he's got to find a place that he just takes a knee, yep. basically. Yeah, that was the right thing to do right don't, there. Don't, yeah, don't make a mistake. Yep. And a timeout is going to be taken by Garden City. We'll take the timeout as well. It's a Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. Utah Heritage Credit Union is your local credit union with offices in Moroni, Mount Pleasant, Ephraim, and Gunnison. Proud to support Snow College. CentriCom believes the service relationship continues long after installation, and we're available to support you every step of the way. That's why if there is a problem with our equipment, a service visit from us means no cost to you. We know the value of a satisfied customer, so if you refer us to a friend, we'll take care of them and you'll get one month of service free. We promise to make your experience the best it can be. CentriCom, keeping you connected. Welcome back once again to Snow College. Gary Chedister and Greg Sterner with you. A beautiful fall afternoon. Snow College Badgers have it fourth and 11, and they're going to line up to go for it here. As they send Deontay Scott split wide to the right, Roberson, Taylor Larson in the slot to the left, and Elijah Irvin wide to the left. Fison in the backfield with Deshaun Cash. Garden City showing blitz, they come with four. Cash steps up in the pocket, now he's in trouble, and he's gonna be sacked all the way back to the 37 yard line. Just waited too long that time, couldn't, the offensive line couldn't hold that long, and who is it that's coming and getting that sack again? 6'5", 295, number 99, Bryce Butler, as he's done all oh, game, yeah. that kid. That kid, I, I don't know the recruiting. I don't know the, you know, the stars, the 247 uh, uh, rankings or anything for the Garden City players as far as the recruiting is concerned. But, man, I, some D1 programs have to be giving that Bryce Butler kid a, a look because he's, uh, he's been a force in the middle for Garden City all day. He has. First and 10, they mark it back at the 35-yard line, so Garden City will take over first and 10 with uh, under three and a half to go. Badgers jumped off sides, a free play. Perry going down the sidelines. Bostros Alessandro back there defensively, and he comes up with the interception. <laughs> what an effort by Bostros. Yeah, pretty pretty fun. All for naught because it's going to be an offside oh, against yeah. Snow, but but a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful play, play by Bostros to go up and get it. That's one where he should put it on his 
highlight reel. Oh, yeah. I just don't have any sound. Nobody, you know, no, no. no commentators or anything to tell you that it was a free play. Just, yeah, just, just go put that on your highlight reel, buddy. Nobody's going to know. Yeah, that's you, right. You put that on the highlight reel, and it's, it's good. Yep. So they're going to mark this off five yards. It'll be put down at the 40, so it'll be first and five now for Garden City. Got to be disciplined on that defensive line right now if you're Snow College. Three wideouts, no, two wideouts to the left. Perry, back to pass, goes over the middle, too high. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Coming over and trying to make a play on it was uh, mm -hmm. Paola. Yeah, you watch that replay, he, he had him. He had him there in the middle of the field, just had to put it on the numbers and wasn't able to. It'll be second and five. In the days of the Mountain Men, Cash. And the clock stops here. Badgers use the opportunity for a substitution. Quincy Milholm is going to check back in at corner. Garden City now is going to run that tight trips on the right side of the formation. Back to passes Perry. Throws the pass underneath. And great defensive play. Who was that once again? Sony Vunipola. Yeah, yeah, good job there by, uh, or Kenny Vunipola, sorry. Yeah, good job there. The receiver, what's that, number 15, Jalen Young out there for Garden City, tried to stiff arm, and Vunipola just, just, just fought through it and brought him down in the open field. That's a tough play to make. I mean, it looks, if you just watch that replay, it looks like, uh, you know, that's what he should do as the defender, but that's a strong guy that caught that ball that's, that's laying the straight arm, so a good job by by Vunipolo. So, so now Garden City subs late, so the officials have to make them wait to if, just in case Snow College wants to. Perry back to pass under some pressure. Pa pocket collapses and he just throws it away. Incomplete, it's gonna bring up fourth and four. Yeah, you, and you had that, that eligible receiver out there. That's not, you know, he doesn't need to get out of the pocket or anything like that because you had the eligible receiver out there, but a good job by Snow defense to get in there. It almost looked like they were setting up a, a screen pass because oh, the snow defenders were in there so quick. That's what I thought. Yeah. So fourth and four. Two wideouts left, two wideouts right for Perry. Perry looks to the sidelines, maybe changes the play here. Takes the snap. He's going to run a quarterback draw. He's got enough for the first down, and he goes down at the 48-yard line. That is enough for the first. Nice job by Perry there to recognize what he needed to get for the first down and just go get it. Yeah, and then get to the ground. Don't take a big shot or anything. Clock will keep running. Just over two minutes now left in this one. Nobody in the backfield. Perry under pressure goes over the middle again. And guess who makes the hit? Yeah. Kenny Voni, Vunipola. Yeah. Boy, have we called his number a lot today or not? Yeah. And I, I need to look at the depth chart to see, because you were saying he started as a safety. I'm pretty sure he started as a safety. Yeah. So they like this game he started, it looks like well, that Mike linebacker it, yeah. position. Yeah. But but as you say, 6'1", 215. So there's a good chance he initially started the season as a safety. Definitely fits that size more. Second down and 10 from the 48-yard line. Four wide receivers split wide to the left. Setting up a screen. Nope, they go down the field, and that ball's just thrown out of bounds. Lots of pressure there from the right defensive end. Tamo, a payoff for the Badgers. Another name that we've called yeah. a few times. Yeah, you call his name a lot when you do a Badger game. Stone. Coming off is Stone Mulatalo. Yeah, he's another one that's been in the quarterback face quite a bit. And Sony Vunipola checks in. So it'll be third and I, 10 from the 48. I hate to put you on the spot here. Are they, okay. are they related? Yes. Those two? Because yes. one of them's... Yeah, one, one of them's a big defensive one lineman. <laughs> the other one, well, you know, the bigger brother gets the most food. I was going to say, he <laughs> stole all the food when they were young because, yeah, he's a lot bigger kid. Third and 10. Pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Trying to do that slant pattern. And uh, Badgers just got the hands up defensively. Is that 97? Is that Sione Monga that, that got I, his hands on that one? I think it was. Yeah. Sione redshirt sophomore out of Orem, Utah. It'll be fourth and 10. A minute 50 remaining. The 
Big fourth down here. Garden City does not have the right players on. Play clock is at nine. Now they get a running back in the backfield with Perry. Perry takes the snap, rolls to the left, buys some time, throws downfield. Is it enough for the first down? They're signaling catch and first down. Yeah, Nice play. Good job by the left, uh, what what was it, the left tackle there to yeah. pick up John Taumoa Payal because he came with a head of steam there to come at the quarterback, but the tackle was able to get that good chip block and slow him down, allowed Perry to have the time to com complete the pass. That stops the clock with a minute 44 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 23-13. Badgers with the 10-point lead. Perry bobbles the snap, looks downfield, and gets away from the first man. Does a great job just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the second Badger is able to come in there and take him down. Talmo will pay out with the initial hit, and then who? Sione Munga was the one who cleaned it up at the end. Boy, that slot receiver looked like he was standing in the neutral zone, but they get away with it. Mm. Pass is caught, going down the sidelines, picking up another first down. I think on the reception was Ryan Guerrero. No, it can't be Ryan Guerrero. He's listed as a linebacker. Giovanni Ribalta on the reception. And you don't see Snow do that very often where they miss. They completely whiff on an open field tackle like that. Their defensive backs are usually pretty good at those open field tackles. A minute 13 remaining. Clock stops after the first down and getting out of bounds by Ribalta. Perry under pressure and just throws that one away. That's that's good awareness in the pocket. Yeah. He looked to the right, knew he had a receiver to the left, and as soon as that wasn't open, felt the pressure and just threw it away to the left. Just throw it 10 feet over his head. Nobody can pick it off. Just live to play that next down. It'll be second and 10 from the 26-yard line. Garden City with the ball, trying to get some points on the board. They need an offense or an onside kick. And another score. Badger defense trying to make him run the clock out here. Perry back to pass. Goes a crossing route. Got a man open. Touchdown. And just like that, Perry finds his man open and gets the, gets the score. And you see a Badger. Badger his that his uniform payout? is completely ripped off. Ripped off. And his helmet is off. No, and he's asking, how is this not... So so that's not Talmo Apeyo. What is that, Munga? Who's who, who knows? He doesn't have a jersey yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, literally, he's coming off of the field with just shoulder pads. Man, I, if, I don't know if after this kick we can see that replay to see if we know what happened there, but that's wild. Extra point coming. Snap is good. Kick is up, and the kick is on the roof. It is good. And that makes it 23-20. As getting, getting into the uh, Mountain America Credit Union end zone is the Garden City Bronkbusters. You got so we're going to keep it here, Gary. So, yeah, so 59.6 seconds left here, 23-20. Badgers with the lead. This makes it a little bit interesting. It, we, you know, two-score game. We kind of thought, you know, just running out the clock. Well, let's get out of this one. If you're the Badgers, you got to do a better job than you did last time on that onside kick. Somebody's oh got to somebody's got to step up and catch that thing and get down. Well, last two possessions, Garden City has got it in the end zone. They started at their own 26 and scored. They started at their own 35 this time and scored. Both of them 26-yard passes. Uh, Tyler Perry, and now the Hans team is out there. At the 45-yard line, you've got two deep. I don't know why. And Bad now, person. is Snow going to take a timeout? Yeah, Snow's going to take a timeout. So we will take the timeout as well. A Utah Heritage Credit Union timeout. Utah Heritage Credit Union for auto, ATV, mortgage, and new home construction loans. In the days of the mountain men, Cache Valley, Utah became a central gathering place for trappers and explorers. They named it Cache because it was there they would store their goods and come together to trade and connect. The spirit of community continues today at Cache Valley Bank with locations and services throughout Utah, including three branches right here in San Pete County. They are Central Utah's financial outfitter. No matter your mountain, they want to see you reach the top. Cache Valley and Central Utah are rooted in grand expeditions. Let's keep that heritage alive together. Discover Cache Valley Bank. Mountains await. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender.
The Snow College Campus Store has something for every member of the family to show their Badger pride. They have hoodies, mugs, car stickers, and more. Online students and parents can get in on the fun too, because now the campus store is online at store.snow.edu. Go there now for all of your Snow College apparel needs. Visit store.snow.edu. That's store.snow.edu. Welcome back as we have the onside kick. I think we're going to have an offsides, but the Badgers do recover at the 49-yard line. So I think Snow will probably decline that. I almost think that was on the kicker. Didn't he do something kind of funny as he was coming up there, almost kind of stutter-stepped or changed directions? I don't think we're going to have replays for the remainder here. I think we've got a, a technical problem with, uh, with our instant replay. Joe, if you didn't get my text, I think the hard drive might be full where we're saving the replays. So if you can go in and change where we're saving the replays, yeah. I think that'll fix that problem. It would problem. probably be a replay of a couple of kneel downs is also <laughs> well, I, not yeah. too worried. But, but yeah, 59 seconds left, three-point lead for the Badgers. Uh, only one timeout for Garden City. So, yeah, you're going to see the Badgers kneel on this a couple of times and get out of here with a good victory. Well, I, you're, you're pretty quick to do this. I, I almost did this at uh, Butler Community College. And, oh geez. And, and we yeah. ended up fumbling the ball and giving a touchdown going into overtime. So from the one. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not I'm not I'm not no, I'm not. <laughs> well what's funny about that one is I'm listening at home. Yeah. And I send you a text you, yep. that says cash money or something like that because Deshaun Cash had come in. Right. And you're and you I think you said just hold on. <laughs> and all they had to do was kneel a couple of times. And and but they were on the one yard line, you know. Right. So it makes it a lot tougher, and they fumble, and Butler gets it, and then that became one of the wildest games you've ever had to call in your yeah, career. Absolutely, <laughs> ranks up there in the top five. But notice what they're doing here: the Snow College not going under center, yeah. which is what they did at Butler. Well, because you're but at the you don't do it all game, and then you do that. But yeah. you're at the one. You kind of have to still. You're, you're saying better taking a safety. I'm I'm saying oh, yeah, you're better taking oh, a safety because okay. you're up by seven. That's true. That's true. And you see, and you do see some teams do that, especially when you're under 30 seconds or so. Take that, take that safety, kick it off to them, and trust your defense to get two stops, three stops or so. But anyway. Well, and there were seven seconds left. Oh, oh yeah. is that all there was? Yeah. I was thinking there was more than that. No, okay. seven seconds. You you can run around in the end zone for two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, timeout was taken by Garden City. Uh, we're going to keep it right here, however, and uh, take a look at the Central Valley Medical Center scoreboard. Having chronic knee pain from a worn-out knee? Check the new Rosa Knee Robotic Technology at CVMC. Call 435-623-3200. A reminder, coming up in the postgame, we'll have the Little Caesars player of the game and the San Pete Steel Steel Man of the game. Steel and Man. What's steel it? Man of the game. Steel. <laughs> I don't have that many hoodies. Stop it. <laughs> Deshaun Cash takes the snap, <laughs> takes a couple of steps up to the line of scrimmage, takes the knee, and we're now under 45 seconds remaining, so we'll have to take the knee one more time. It's third down and 14, and you only have to snap the, you know, they can snap it now. It's under, under 35 seconds on the game clock. And that's what happens. The Badgers are going to run this clock out. <laughs> Isaiah Jada trying to... <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> Maybe trying to bait the official into a flag there or something. I don't know. But wow. Good win for the Badgers. Great win for the Badgers. Yep, 23-20. Uh, Snow College trailed this one 7 to nothing. Yeah. Took the, uh, the lead on a 52-yard touchdown pass to Deuce Roberson. And the Badgers converted two two-point conversions in this game. And, and honestly, that is the key to the game. I mean, that's four points. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Both both teams have three touchdowns here. You, you see what I'm saying? Both yeah. three. Both teams have three touchdowns. Badgers win 23-20. So there you go. So it's all about those extra points. It is all about those extra points. So Garden City will uh, drop to three and four. Snow College Badgers improve to five and two, and Snow College will have Air Force prep next week. We'll have that game for you on a Friday afternoon. Uh, we invite you to tune in for that. Still trying to work out some of the logistics to find out whether I'm going to have internet or not uh, to be able to do a video broadcast from, from Air Force Prep. Uh, it kind of depends on where the game is going to be for sure because that is sometimes 
in question as well. But Snow College with the big win as we check that Central Valley Medical Center scoreboard. Snow College 23 and uh, Garden City 20. We'll be back with the post-game show and some statistics for you right after this. CO Building Systems in Ephraim manufactures a complete line of pre-engineered metal buildings of all sizes. Plus, they are your headquarters for custom metal roof and wall panels for your home or business, including all trim and accessories. All of their roof and wall panels are available in several gauges in over 20 different colors. For a free cost estimate or more information, contact CO Building Systems in Ephraim. 800-262-5347. That's 800-262-5347. Online at cobuildings.com. I'm Dr. Chris Karish, orthopedic surgeon with a subspecialty in sports medicine. Central Valley Medical Center has state-of-the-art operating rooms and the latest orthopedic equipment to provide me with the tools to perform safe and minimally invasive procedures. I've had the opportunity to treat athletes from my own sons to the NFL. I provide a wide variety of treatments to get you back on your feet and enjoying your life. Come see us here at Central Valley Medical Center where we can treat you as a friend and not a medical record number. This is Nate Johnson of Risk Managers Insurance Agency in Ephraim. It is surprising how many people do not have any life insurance or adequate coverage today. If you were to suddenly die, would your family have enough money for your funeral and to pay off any debt you may have, or funds to live on with your income no longer available to care for your family? You may be surprised at how low life insurance rates are. Let me sit down with you and discuss how life insurance can benefit you and your family. Call us at Risk Managers in Ephraim, 283-4685. And welcome back to Terry Foote Stadium and Robert L. Stoddard Field. Joining us in the uh, booth is head coach Zach Erickson. And coach, congratulations. I, I know, I, well, I shouldn't say I know. I felt earlier this week when I was talking to you, you were a little bit nervous about this game. I mean, their record didn't show how good a team they were. Three and three coming into this, and you, you knew they had talent. So this has got to feel good to get get this one behind you yeah it does Any, anytime you get a win uh, feels good they're hard to come by especially at this level especially against this level of competition um, you know and this schedule I'll take any win we can get um, you know you, you feel a little you feel a little like kissing your sister after giving up that last <laughs> touchdown right there um, but you know like I said uh, a win is a win uh, and that's a really good football team that we just played and so I'm proud of our guys proud of our staff for being able to bounce back uh, and make sure that we were ready to go this Saturday. Uh, and, and, man, I'll tell you what, I will enjoy some Saturday night football on my couch tonight a lot more than I did last weekend. There you go. Now, I, I'm going to ask you this question because it, it's on my mind, and you might not even have the answers. We lost Cole Bowers early. Um, he, he, he was limping last week. And when we went to pizza, I said, you got to quit limping, man. You're, we need you. And, but I, I think it was the same, same thing here early wasn't it um well you know i'm i'm not the doctor uh, i did talk to the doctors and uh it i fear the worst they fear the worst uh potential acl they're gonna go get pictures uh oh. tonight and uh we'll see going forward okay now having said that sony uh kenny vunipola stepped up and he was all over the field today he was he, he played well uh in relief in that spot so he actually uh started the game opposite cole at the other inside linebacker spot and then we had to bump him back over uh, when Cole went down and put Junior and kind of rotated some other guys in there at that middle linebacker spot. Um, but he did. I mean, he did what we needed him to do and did enough to be able to make sure that we were able to win the football game. So answer me this, be, be, and, and I might be totally off. I, I had the impression that Kenny started this season in as a safety. No? no. Has he been linebacker no. he, all, he, all year? Well, he started as an outside linebacker. Um, and then we've kicked him into the box. So he started as a rover. Okay. So you could get that impression because sometimes he's up in the box, sometimes he's backed up a little bit as a rover. Okay. Uh, and then the last couple of weeks we've kicked him inside, yeah. Okay, all right. So I, I'm not totally no. – oh, no. Okay, all right. Um, good effort, uh, I thought, uh, from uh, Rasul Faison. Uh, ran really hard for you. Gained over 100 yards. Greg brought this up. You are now – what is what is it, Greg? 11? 11 and 1 when you have a 100 yard rusher. Man. Were you even aware of that? I, I was not aware of that, and I'm glad you pointed that out because that will be what I, that's what I will lead our Monday morning meeting with uh, in our staff meeting, and then in our Monday team meeting, we will lead with that stat because that's a good, that's a good indication of what we need to do as a football team in order right. to be successful. And, yeah. uh, you know, you got to see uh, Targi back out there healthy, and it's, it's, I'll tell you what, when number seven is healthy, he's fun to watch. 
and uh, you I saw agree. him get back out there. Rasul got the majority of the carries, but Targi had some big runs there uh, when we needed him. Seeing him getting the edge here on that last drive of ours, uh, you know, where he got the horse collar. I mean, that's that's the seven we know and love, and it's good to see him back healthy again, being able to do that. On the on the play on the far side where he got the edge, I want to give credit to Rasul. Rasul had a great kickout block that he to did. give him that angle to that get in. That he did, and Rasul ran over to the sideline and said, Coach, I told you I could block. <laughs> That's great. You you got to love right. what the, right. what's happening exactly. there in the yep. backfield. Yep. So a, a great win for you guys. Coming up this uh, next week, you've got uh, Air Force prep. I don't know. It seems like back when, when I was calling the games a long time ago, you never knew what you got with Air Force prep well, either. Uh, I'll tell you what you do know is you're going to get, number one, you're going to get triple option. Number two, you're going to get an extremely disciplined football team uh, at, to the point where we have to be extremely disciplined and everybody has to play assignment sound football because if you don't, that triple option can gash you. And, and that's why they do that because if you play teams that don't do their assignment and do their job, uh, they can be very successful. And so uh, it's a little nerve wracking having a short week because uh, we play that game on a Friday. On Friday and so, yeah. so we really lose two days of practice uh, because of the travel there. And so uh, we got to make sure we're on our P's and Q's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and make sure we're ready to roll come Friday afternoon. All right. Coach, thanks for joining us up here. Uh, a, a great weekend. We had the uh, Hall of Fame induction of uh, Coach Keith Uparessa. Um, had, had you met, met him or t known him yeah. from before? So so not until this year. So I'm, I'm obviously a part of that committee, uh, the Hall of Fame committee. And so it wasn't until uh, we started collecting nominations and votes for that that I got to start to uh, communications with Coach Oops. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, man, that guy, that guy is a, a top – top human being of all the guys I've ever met, uh, just being able to listen and conversate with him uh, and be able to soak in as much knowledge from him as I can uh, and then to see the reception that he got from his former players uh, and coaches that he's coached and coached with. Uh, you know, I, I got to sit there in that dinner last night and I thought, man, if 30 years from now I could be half this successful with these relationships and these type of things accomplished, I'd feel pretty good about myself. So it was a fabulous weekend being able to honor him and his family was here. It was great to have all of them here. Uh, and I told him this morning he came to breakfast and had breakfast with our team and, and oh, addressed cool. our team this morning. Uh, and he gave a great talk to those guys this morning. And I told them, I said, hey, your one job is to finish off homecoming the right way. Everything else up to this point has been fantastic and you have one job, go out and win the game. And we did. Good, good. And I didn't realize that you uh – Coach Tidwell was at BYU when you were up Correct. there? Correct, yes. I played for Coach Tidwell, which, uh, you know, he's the one that hired Coach Oops down here, and then Coach Oops replaced Coach Tidwell. Uh, so Coach Tidwell and I go way back. He was one of my favorite coaches I've ever played for. Uh, and so it's fun to be able to work with him in, you know, now that he's on the alumni committee, uh, it's fun to be able to work with him in our uh, Hall of Fame uh, induction process. So uh, it's just full circle. You just love how it all works out. And, and again, it's all about those relationships that, we, that you build with the people you work with on a daily basis. Well, I hope I'm still alive in 30 years for you to come back and, and be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and, and I hope you MC mine too, just like you did last night. <laughs> Thank, thanks, right. Coach. I, I appreciate that. And, and a great win. I, I mean, yeah, you said it would have been nice to keep them out of the end zone, but this is a, a good team. And, and first, you got to have the win. That's right. That's exactly right. And like I said, hey, any win is a good win. All right, Coach. Thanks for joining us on the post game show. We're going to wrap things. Well, we we got to have the player of the game. I, I'm I'm uh, and well, I I don't know. I I let, I, I let him pick it last week. Well, and, and, and look it, what happened. And, yeah. I, I might be bad luck, so I'm, I may leave you guys to that <laughs> uh, to be able to pick that. So um, you know, no, that there was a lot of good guys, and and you guys looking at the stat sheet and all that, you can uh, kind of make that. You know, I might that. make a weird pick here, but I, I thought one thing that was huge was at the very beginning in the first quarter with uh, Jackson Reese pinning two two punts inside the five. I mean, those were huge. Jackson Jackson executed his job flawlessly today, and I wouldn't argue with you if you guys made that pick. So I'll, I'll let you guys make that so pick. So I, I, I'm, I'm off the topic here, but kind of with the topic. Have you taught him how to kick that? Because that looked like one of your 60-degree lob wedges <laughs> that goes down and just <laughs> bites a, hard hey, and, and spins back. That's right. Well, you know what? I, I wish I could take the credit for that. Um, but but I've had had some success with my 60-degree looking a lot like that. As of late. So, <laughs> but no, I, I was, that You're, was pretty you good. You are humble that guy. That was pretty I, good by Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> or or, or do, you, do you have one of the uh, Bomb Tech 70-degree no, no, wedges? No, no, I definitely don't have that. I play with a good old-fashioned 60-degree Cleveland wedge. So. There you go. <laughs> all right, Actually, thanks, guys. All right, thanks, Coach. <laughs>
All right. Thanks to Coach uh, Zach Erickson for joining us up here on the postgame show. Uh, again, a, a great win for Snow College. So uh, y- you're going to have some input here. Is that who you were pointing to was yeah. Jackson Reese? Yeah. Uh, so are we going to give him the steel man or the player of the game? Uh, I would say let's give him the player of the game. All right. So player of the game is going to uh, Jackson Reese. Let me write this down here. Who's our sponsor for that one? That is Little Caesars. Player of the game. Little Caesars makes their dough fresh in-house every day and uses 100% mozzarella and Munster cheeses. And uh, thanks to uh, Denise Duncan, who brought us a a Little Caesars pizza up here in the booth, and I I was able to get one piece over the course of... (laughs) The whole second half, which which was uh, tasty. If so we we're had getting, e- if we, if we, if it was an ESPN Plus game, we would have ate each ate a whole pizza <laughs> during the media breaks. <laughs> uh, I've made a move or a motion. It's uh, in front of the the athletics that we don't play any more ESPN Plus games at home. <laughs> okay. Because we lose the very next week. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So Jackson Reese is our player of the game. Sam Pete Steel Steel Man of the game. Sam Pete Steel Steel Man of the game is given to a player who makes a tough gritty play that changes the momentum of the game. Sam Pete Steel done right and on time, and we we had talked about a couple a couple of plays mm-hmm. um, that that really changed things, and now I'm having trouble remembering. Well, there was the, the the inside the five yard line, the fourth down stop down here. Okay. Uh, there was a big hit. Uh, I don't remember. Was it Ocho So? Uh, was it? Uh, Oh, was it Bostros Alessandro that made a big hit that separated the ball from, and, and that was another big one on a third down that you had talked about. But as far as a, a steel man of the game, it's coming down to two for me, Gary. All right. So you're going to help me limit, I break will. this down. Kini Vonopolo, Vonopolo had 12 tackles in this oh one. My Eight goodness. solo tackles, four assisted tackles, so 12 okay. total tackles. Uh, Rashua Faison. 102 oh. yards rushing. You would have to do this. So to me. here's my question. Kay. Here's my question. Has either of them got player or steel man of the game this year? Yes. Which one? I think Rasul has. Okay, it. then we're going to give it to Kenny. Kenny. Kenny Vunipola. There you go. All right. Thanks to Kenny Vunipola. Sam Pete Steele done right and on time. Sam Pete Steele is supporting Snow College's tradition of excellence. And a final check of the uh, Central Valley Medical Center scoreboard. From orthopedics to pediatrics, trust CVMC. And uh, final score, 23-20. Two, two-point conversions by Snow College, huge in this ballgame. Targi Lamson is able to get in the uh, Mountain America Credit Union end zone twice. And uh, Deuce Roberson gets into the end zone for the, uh, the other touchdown for Snow College. Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward with affordable financial services and expert advice. Details at macu.com. Thanks to Carter. Thanks to uh, Emily out on the camera. Thanks to uh, Joe Williams, who comes back and engineers the game for us here to, today. I appreciate Joe and uh, him helping us out. We were a little bit shorthanded, and we had soccer going on. The men's soccer team still playing. The uh, Lady Badgers end up winning 4-2 to two over Salt Lake Community College. And we'll have Snow College at Air Force Prep this coming Friday. Game time is at 1 o'clock. Not sure if we're going to be on uh, TV as well, but we will definitely have the game on KMTI AM 650. We invite you to join us for that. For Greg Sterner and Joe Williams and Emily and Carter out on the uh, producing of the game, I'm Gary Chedister. Have a pleasant weekend, everyone. You've been listening to live Snow College Badger sports action on KMCI, the sports leader in South Central Utah. This sports broadcast has been brought to you by sports-minded sponsors throughout South Central Utah. Join us again for Snow College.